Welcome to 91 Reasons, a pop culture fueled rocket into the far reaches of nerd culture. Featuring your hosts, Jeff, Rachel, Luna, Austin, and Josie. It's Tucker time. So when I started 91 Reasons, the whole idea uh, in the early episodes was I'll review movies and and I'll tell stories about my childhood, and there'll be, you know, mini time capsules for my children to have long after I'm gone. I mean, I, I, I've said it before, like, I would kill for any kind of recording of my father. I have nothing. I have letters, and I'll take what I can get, you know. I'm happy to have what I have. Uh, but if I had, like, him talking to me in his voice, that would be, um, that would be priceless, uh, but like anything in life, uh, things change, they morph, they transform. Creative things especially, they end up, you think you are in control of things creatively and the things you create end up being in control of you and they tell you how to behave. And anybody who's creative knows exactly what I'm talking about, which is you know most of the audience here. So 91 Reasons changed and morphed and it's, you know, I didn't expect to, to meet people and to make like real connections with people. I, that was the furthest thing from my mind, you know, and yet I have made so many strong, really, you know, indelible iron titanium friendships uh, that I, I couldn't be, uh, you know, more humbled by that. People who support the show in monetary ways or in equipment ways or by by spreading the word on social media and everyone help, like like they take 91 reasons and they're part of it. And the truth is, yes, they're part of it. And then they transcend that by wanting to, to come on the show and have a conversation. And like, that's the coolest thing ever. Like the conversation you're about to hear would not have happened if I hadn't had the show, like I would never have met this guy. And yet I was at California adventure one day watching uh, turtle talk with crush and Rachel was, you know, very, very diligently uh, recording all of our moves on social media. And we got a message like, Hey, I'm over on the other side of the building and I listen to your show and I want to meet you. So we went out of the building out of the side we were on to the other side and there's Noel, and he works and runs the Animation Academy. He's one of the talented artists who teach you how to draw. And his main thing was he wanted to meet Austin, you know, because you know Austin's such a strong personality that uh, uh, pe people are drawn to Austin. It's very strange. He hasn't quite figured out what to do with that. You know, he has. It's weird because he has a touch of Asperger's. He has no. No calculating mind. Like he takes everything at face value, like the Drax in Guardians of the Galaxy. You know, like everything's at face value. He has no, God bless him, no second agenda, no anything except who he is. And who he is, he is happy to tell you who he is because he doesn't give a crap if you like it or not. And he is me in high school times three. Uh, I, I didn't really give a crap in high school, but Austin really doesn't give a crap. Like he is way above me in that level. And you know, you can be very envious because he lives on this plane. Where, I mean, no joke. He's uh, 16, almost 17, 17 this year. And he's had women and women, girls at high school, like throw themselves at him. And he just, he's just not interested. And I think when he does find the one girl that he's interested in, we're all going to be shocked at, at the, the match that is made, how good it will be. You know, I've always said like, we're all going to be shocked when Austin comes home from some holiday and he's got like a 12 on his arm and like everybody in the room stops and she loves him because he simply doesn't give a crap. So Noel wanted to meet Austin. He wanted to talk chicken strip talk with him. And we got, we've got we gotten to know Noel and his amazing family. And I finally said, look, Noel, you, you, like everybody that I know, you have amazing stories. And let's just sit down, have a conversation, and see where it goes. And everybody's always hesitant for that. I, no, no, no. 
I'll I'll lead the conversation. There's no pressure on you. You just have to. It just has to flow. You know, it just has to have that flow. And null had flow. I mean, we could have gone on two or three hours, like any, like like as if we had known each other forever. You know, and in some spiritual way, we have because we have the same stories, the same manias that we were into the same crushes and da 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 you know i've always said we're all in this together nobody is alone you know you can reach out to me if you feel you are alone reach out to me i will tell you we're in this together you know i've met so many amazing people doing this show you know michael bondy uh uh, <laughs> uh hendel thistletop you know, and Jason and uh, Carl and, you know, I'm going to miss people. But, I mean, there's so many people that support the show and are excited. Like, you do a show. I want to I want to listen. And I, when I started out, you know, everybody has that idea. Like, it's going to be massive and I'm going to do a stadium tour. <clears throat> but it never, never ends up that way. But this, what I've gotten out of 91 Reasons is infinitely more valuable than a stadium tour or un you know nameless faceless fans what i got is connections people real relationships you know people that my wife talks to every day on facebook and we only know them because of 91 reasons that's that's amazing so in that spirit uh i'm going to present uh my good friend, Noel Cox, who works at the Animation Academy, California Adventure. He is a former Simpsons animator. Worked on The Simpsons, for God's sake. Can hold his own in a conversation with me about The Simpsons. That's a big deal. Also, owned his own comic book shop. The dream of every nerd. He lived it. He ran his own comic shop. That's the coolest freaking thing ever. You know? I wish I could do it in my own comic book store where I could dispense the insults of receiving them. Your old band, your both. I mean, that would be the greatest, right? So without further ado, please uh, welcome to the show my good friend, uh, Noel Cox. All right, everybody. It's uh, December 27th, 2016. Uh, it's a sucky day. It's a sucky day because... We got news early this morning that uh, Carrie Fisher had passed away. Uh, Princess Leia in the Star Wars universe. Uh, the jilted lover in Blues Brothers. Uh, Tom Hanks' wife in The Burbs. Uh, Tom Hanks is uh, somebody in uh, in uh, The Man with One Red Shoe. Do you remember that movie? The Man with One Red Shoe? I've not seen it. It's where he gets uh, uh, mistaken for a Russian spy. Um she was also very, uh, let's see, I, I love all the obscure stuff. She was on an episode of a, anthology, anthology, of a sketch comedy show on NBC in 1984 called The New Show. My father was the associate director of The New I Show. I love The New Show. Oh my God, I've got my father in here. So I'm sitting in a room with everybody. We've got another big room here today, but mostly it's Noel Cox, everybody. Woo! Hello! Hello! We've been trying to get Noel on the show for a while. Noel's a guy who listened to the show and kind of knew who I was. And then one day was following us on Facebook and we were in his building at California Adventure, the animation building. Correct. And we were there to see the turtle yeah, talk with we Crush. Yeah, the turtle instead of the cartoon guy. Then afterwards, you came out and you were like, oh my God, it's, it, it's all of you and you. You were doing like uh, Dorothy. You were there and you were there and you were there. Was I annoying? No. Be honest. No. I was geeking out mostly to meet Austin. I wanted to see what he looked like. And that I, I was amazed that someone could know so much about chicken strips. It was really funny because he came home and he's like, I met the Tuckers from 91 Reasons. I probably really creeped them out. <laughs> hey, who are you? <clears throat> I'm Amanda Cox. I'm Noel Cox's daughter. Oh, my God. I met Noel's daughter. Oh. <laughs> Ooh. Yeah, Austin is... Uh, we also have... Uh, go ahead. Who are we? We also have Austin. Hello. Hello. Josie. Hello. Luna. Hi. Rachel Hello. and Austin, he gets it everywhere he goes because he's so opinionated on uh, chicken strips of all things to be opinionated on. Yummy. He knows every restaurant, every chicken strip, right? Well, the thing is, when you go to a restaurant and you look at the know. menu, you so feel awfully know. nervous of what to order. Chicken strip, you know you're going to like it. Just see what type they have to offer. 
You can learn a lot about restaurants by their chicken strip. Who has the worst chicken strip? Uh, worst bottom line is a tough wall. There's a lot of different categories of worst. Didn't you say like Carl's Jr.? No, Carl's no, that's, Jr. That's was amazing. Ten. That's yeah, that 10. got a 10. Oh, yeah. we, I that's took him to ten. Carl's Jr. Because like, oh. value-wise, because absolute bottom line is McDonald's. Oh, they're, chi- they're cardboard. They're cardboard. Those are chicken dude. nuggets. Those yeah. are different. But if you want to just say worst value, they're actually not that bad. But I'm going to go with Islands because you're just getting whipped off. Islands. It's. I think you've been there, what, twice in your lifetime. Yeah. Yeah. But it's still Islands. expensive, and you're getting bottom line chicken strips. Because I can remember you had the chicken strips at uh, TGI Fridays, and they were coated in Cap'n Crunch cereal. Those were pretty bad. And you sent them back. He was like four, and he sent them back. You know, I would try that. I'm a big fan of the Captain and his ability to stay crunchy in milk. And uh, <laughs> Well, you know the thing is, we discovered... Uh, uh, I knew somebody who worked at TGI Fridays, and they said, oh, across the board, most restaurants, the kids' meals are loaded with sugar. Oh, yeah. Because they want the kids to like the food so much that they tell the parents, take me there. So the idea that the chicken strips are coated in children's sugary breakfast cereal plays right into that. Did you try it? Oh, God, no. It looked terrible. Really? Uh, yeah, no. Out of morbid curiosity alone, you th- I think you would try but, it. But Captain Crunch is peanut butter, right? No, there's peanut butter Captain Crunch. There's regular Captain Crunch. Yeah. There's Crunch Berries. So, there used to be Cinnamon Toast Captain like Crunch. I like the peanut butter one. I don't really like the What is regular one. Captain What is it's, that supposed it's, it's to be? Like a, it's like a corn wheaty. Sweet corn? Sweet it's corn. like I sweet. I like the peanut butter, and I'm not really a fan of peanut butter. It's like a I've sweet packing, styrofoam butter. packing material, it's, really, it's, is yeah. what it is. It's good. And you want to wedge a piece of chicken in the middle of that. It's kind of like Reese's peanut butter but without the chocolate you when know, I, the cereal? have you ever ordered something in a restaurant and you're like i this is the worst thing i've ever seen whoa that's a tough one you know the one thing i ordered yes. um i'll give you an example i ordered the um the the fan remember the fantastic four movie last summer <gasps> nobody remembers yeah, it. I, yeah yeah i wanted to see it denny's had a hamburger in, in in promotion of the movie and it was a big hamburger for the thing and it had oh, a cooked God. egg in the middle of it. Ugh. A fried egg. Yeah. So that when you bit it, all the, the yolk would... went yeah. all over... And that just sounds like a It was the mix. most disgusting thing I had ever eaten. Jack Kirby's rolling over in his grave right yeah. now. You don't put breakfast with lunch and dinner. Well, the thing was, Josie, it was the equivalent of, I think, what it felt like to watch that movie. <laughs> oh, I did watch that. Movie. You just, did? I did. It's just oh, a hot well, you, mess. Yeah, exactly. It, you, you like? No, it's you, like you eating a very, whole barnyard. I think you're very forgiving. With you watch a lot of superhero. No, movies. I hated that movie. I loathed it. But I love the Fantastic Four. I, I think the best Fantastic Four movie ever made was The Incredibles. Um, well, I agree with that. I don't know. I they, totally agree with that. Nobody's cracked the code on giving us a good Fantastic Four movie. Well, no, I think I think it's. I don't think it's ever going to happen. I, I don't think we're ever going to get it. We're going to keep getting Fantastic Four movies because Fox wants to keep the oh. license. But I don't think we're ever going to get a good one. We're never going to get one that captures the G Wiz spirit. It's like a sitcom family no, with powers. Yeah, nobody wants to make that movie. That's a fun, feel-good movie with some weird spacey elements. Remember when Dash is running across the water? Yeah. And he has that look of, I can't believe I'm doing this. Yeah. The movies never give you that. Superman can fly, and he's just, eh, fly. Eh, you know, eh. The magic is gone. Well, they make these gritty, dark movies. That's, I mean, yeah. Batman versus Superman. He, ba- Batman must have killed like twenty guys. In Why that did movie. you say that name? That was, that was insane. That was like a very violent Batman. I didn't. Yeah, really yeah. Like but that, they think that's what people want. Well, like, Tim Burton like movie. One, He's got I machine liked, guns. He's blowing liked, away the city. He's flying over it with a yeah. the bat plane. Like, I liked Wonder Woman in a Batman versus Superman movie. Like I was waiting for Wonder Woman. Yeah, I just don't like that all the colors are muted. Amen. I want the superheroes, especially Wonder Woman, to be bright and I guess they want almost to like day a more, glow, like a more mature. Yeah, mature schmer. It's a woman with a golden lasso. Let's revel in it. Let's, like, let's, yeah, let's let's let's. I agree. Let's 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 raise it up and lift it up and go. Look how great. I mean, the thing is, is the thing with with Wonder Woman and a few other properties, they'll never admit that the ones who did it before them already got it right. The, the Linda Carter show? Wow. Already got it right. I didn't even think about that, but that's true. Yeah. Everybody's you, got to pee on the pole and put their own oh, yeah. spin on the They're thing. They're all just chasing, you know, and not always. Sometimes something comes out and you're like, wow. Like, like I really liked um, Dark Knight. I thought, wow, this is a adult Batman. You know, he's, the Joker is a, a real formidable yeah. uh, menace. It was different. He was dark. Uh, I'm totally okay with that. Um, but sometimes it's like, you go to like the A, did you see the A-Team movie? 
No. There's no reason for that. I drew the they line got there. it right the first time. <laughs> It was stupid. They, they blow up the van in the first five minutes. Yeah, it's like the, the did they really? They yeah. blew up the van. And they never saw it again. Wow. There was only one scene in that movie that I liked. You know what I'm talking about? The plane. Right? The plane, because yeah. I was like so excited because I'm a big fan of when you put the characters in a situation and it really looks like they're not going to make it out. Right. I, that's my favorite. Right. Because if they get out of it in a clever way, I will stand up and go, "That's the great." Like jumping so, out of the plane with a life raft, for example. Well, you, well that, I don't know if that's the best example. Yeah, no, but it's, that's like, oh my God, what's he going to... Oh, like, oh. have you seen the movie Passengers with Chris Pratt and Jennifer Lawrence? No, I haven't seen it they yet. Have, like, they're, they're, I'm not going to spoil anything, but there is that moment where you think that they're not going to make it. Yeah. Well, you know, uh, we'll get back to 18, but the, it's like um, Gravity. You ever see Gravity? Heard where that. Sandra Bullock's stranded in space yes, and Bullock. you go like god boy she's never gonna get out of this and then they go oh by the way there's like 10,000 places up there she can hang out in and you're like well maybe you could have said that at the beginning and then I would have went oh when they, she goes to it it's cool as opposed to there's a Chinese spaceship uh, you know five <laughs> clicks that way Here's was there really a Chinese spaceship yeah and then she uses the fire extinguisher like Wally. e Whoa. Before Wally, e or I yeah, don't yeah. remember. Sandra but uh, invented Wally. <laughs> right, but in the A team, they are in a tank that gets thrown out of an airplane and it's it's crashing to earth. They have no parachute. I'd rather be in a life raft. And they go and you go at the theater you go, Well how are they gonna get out of this one? And you know how they get out of it? I have no idea. They find a lake somewhere What? Wait wait wait, wait somewhere <laughs> around them. So uh, Hannibal is having, I think, Murdoch. They pivot the tank and shoot a, 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 a round out to propel the tank <laughs> towards the lake. That sounds fun, actually. Oh, you know what? I was like, I like it. it's absurd, it's stupid, and I love it. <laughs> but that's okay. But it's you following know? the rules of its universe. Yeah, I mean, I got a novel with a flying train. You know what a train weighs? That it's would be never going to get in the air. But, you know, because, I mean, without... You know, Doc Brown's right, big right, engines. Right, right. Mine's with balloons. So really? it has to be made. Of, there's a, a, a throwaway line where he goes, well, it's made of a special alloy. But there I don't, it's not like I don't, I don't um, address it. You know what I mean? You just, the audience just buys it. What's the, what's the worst superhero movie you've ever seen? Oh, I got to, ooh, okay. Catwoman. Uh, is, oh, I couldn't watch all of that. That's a bad one. That is Dare, really Dare, awful. Daredevil is a big stinker. The first one, or the only one they made so far. This is one that people actually like, but I really didn't care for Chronicle. I thought it was pretty lame. That's the Chronicle. the found footage one. Yeah, it gave me yeah. a headache. I didn't get it. And I know it. I usually like, like found footage films. I, I think do that not. Very, I think like they, give, like they give you a headache, but they really give me like that feeling that you're this there. Is real. It's yes, really like, happening. Like for example, the new Blur Witch that came out. We went and saw it for oh. my seventeenth birthday. Oh my god! It gave us a headache, mm. but the ending is just it. It wasn't the mm. best movie but it really just sucked me in i'm so jealous of you guys she just turned 17 and wanted to buy an r-rated movie ticket yeah and that was the only horror movie planned so but we I'm, went and saw it i'm such a cynic <clears throat> that i don't i can't go into a movie and go man that was great unless it's truly great i thought and, it was i walked out of there thinking that was a steaming mess <laughs> she was smiling that was great She's 17, I'm 48. Oh, that's like, I liked Rogue One much better than Force Awakens, though. Yeah, that's all right. I saw Princess My Star. review was simply, if you liked Rogue One, I'm just jealous. Yeah, I agree. Because I want to like it. I want to yeah. be that person. I want to be happy. I want to go back to church, but yeah, I don't feel I, like I'm I, welcome I, there exactly. anymore. I want to go back to church, but welcome. guess what? Yeah. The religion has moved on without me. I always tell the people that, because they always want me to go see the. I refused to see this even. I'm not going to give them one what? more dime of my money. You didn't see Rogue One? I refused. No, I, oh. I saw no. on a date with my boyfriend. Okay. I, I tell everybody, I used to date this girl really steady, and yeah. we had a great relationship. Yeah. Then she went away, and then she came back. She was weird. And then she came back, and she was completely different. And now I, I can't have anything to do with her. Yeah, my, my analogy is... Uh, it was a really good friend I had growing up. Yeah. And yeah. I watched him die in front of me. Mm. That's and pretty, that was uh, the prequels. I just like... You get sold oh, to white slavers. Oh, yeah, yeah, it's sold well. That's... Hey, you know what? You make fun of Lucas, but he's totally right. No, I agree with They're you. They're totally raping Star Wars. Yeah. This one movie a year, oh, garbage. amen. If, if the toy aisle doesn't have time to reset between movies, you're making too many movies. Wow. How I about that? I thought about that. It's true. That's what happened with Thor. By the time Thor Dark World came out, mm. there were still Thor toys on the aisle. So there's, this is a problem. There's a reason Lucas was a master of three years. Yeah. Because in three years, guess what? 
I collected everything from The Empire Strikes Back. And I was ready for the new collection from Return of the Jedi. And Kenner, Kenner presents the Return of the Jedi oh my collection. God. I'd lay on the ground looking at those Star little Wars books. Every three years? That's what was 77, 80, 83. Yeah, back in the day. 99, 2002, 2005. First oh, one you had to wait three years to see a Star Three Wars years. Movie. This every year thing's for the. And you know, it wasn't even supposed to be a year. It was supposed yeah. to be five months. Yeah. Force Awakens in December and. Rogue One, Rogue one in uh, May. May. Yeah. That's ridiculous. Now, well, Too much Star Wars. What's the problem with me? Because I grew up with Star Wars. I played with the toys to death. And I even liked the prequels. I liked yeah. them. I liked the Clone Wars series. And when I saw Force Awakens, I'm like, I think this might renew my interest. It's, it's hard to make Star Wars bad. I just love Star Wars. And I didn't like it. I thought it was it's bad. Because, it's because you also grew up going to Disneyland and loving Disneyland. And you thought, they're going to open a new park next door. I am going to love it. And then it opens, and you're like, boy, you guys didn't even try. Yeah. Talking about California Adventure. Yeah. I thought you liked that park better than the other park. Well, no, I just like the nostalgia. Yeah, he likes it because that's where we went. reminds him when he was young. Yeah. Yeah. But the actual park itself, if you look at it, it's arguably one of the worst theme parks ever built. California Adventure? Yeah. Yeah. I think even now, I'm not a fan of it. I didn't think $1 billion later they fixed it, and that makes sense. But at least there's a Starbucks in it now. Yeah, I know, right? Like, but I, I just I just find it crazy you can put that money into the park and it's still not worth going to. Like, they I bought us new vests at the Animation Academy. When Ooh, they did you got a new vest. vest. <laughs> it's got a I mouse on it. I have to agree. I do like going to Calaventure. Cal- Cal- Wait. Cal- you like coming and visiting Cal- me. Adventure because I get to see him and we always would see him when we were little coming to Disneyland. But there is much more to do in the Disneyland park. Rather than, I remember when they changed favorite. when they changed California. Remember the big sun that used to be there yeah. at the fountain. The sun yeah. will. <laughs> the sun will with the reflectors that always reflected <laughs> the, the sun, sun of where it was. If I could just oh. get yeah. like, yeah. house for the, DCA, I'm the fine Golden with Gate Bridge. I'd be so Gate yeah. Yeah. Ra- Rachel really likes DCA. I, I, I think too. It's my favorite. It's less crowded. It's less stressful experience. It's less fun. That's true. There's nothing, All of fun. It's fun. there's nothing Disney has to offer for me right now. The best suggestion I could give to them is demolish Bugsland. Just get wet of the whole thing. I love Bugsland. And I would build Utopia there. Why not? It's you know what somebody <laughs> told me about Bugsland? I don't know if we talked it's not about it. a bad idea, somebody. son. No, no, Bugsland is cute. You know what somebody told me about Bugsland? <laughs> because you can see the, well, you used to, the, the tower hotel right there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You're supposed to be on the lawn. Right, you're supposed to be bugs level. Bugs under level. All the plants, yeah. I love of the lawn the of the hotel. Oh, I never knew that. Yeah, I was that, never told no, that. No, yeah, no, I was told that because that because everyone's mm. like, well, how can you can see the hotel? Right. Well, you because you're on the lawn of the right. hotel. Wow, that's a big reach. Isn't that great? Like, right. They can put in better rides or better stuff to do within Bugsland, but I think it's very cute, and I like, I love the show. The it's tough to be a bug, even though it creeps me out. Well, here's I what I would do. Little bugs, I, but that theater is so big. I would tear out the entire theater and the whole land, and I would build a massive big buds at Zootopia to be fully in character to compete with Harry Potter. That would work. They need Zootopia. Yes. They need Zootopia. I would Zootopia? also. I would also oh, take God, I hated like, Zootopia. And look, or knowing even them, if you they hated, make it okay, look, 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 I'm talking a business standpoint. Let's talk as businessmen. Even if the movie was bad and it had a controversial message, let's think about the property, the characters it offers, the world it has to offer. Yes. It would be striking architecture with fitting things that could make it immersive like Harry Potter. People would want to go there. They already have that with the bug thing, though. No, no. Does the Zootopia property have the legs to last? Yes, That's what the theme park is going to look at. It's already a big years from now, they're still going to like this flavor ice cream. Land. I, no, I, I disagree. Ask, I asked the guy at the Heimlich train ride. Oh, dear Lord. I said, I said so when it goes in the box, what kind of dark ride is in there? And he goes, no, no, it just comes out the other side of the box. Yeah. And I said, are you, you joking? You really, you didn't know that. Oh, yeah, I thought it was oh. a dark yeah, ride. Yeah. A Why would Disney a put a mall a train one. in the park and it's a oh mall train? Oh, my God, I didn't never, I never knew that. That is a mall train. It's a mall oh train. Oh, my God, he's right. Well, here's another Love thing. You. All of those Bugs rides are off-the-shelf Zamparella oh, yeah, right, type right, right. rides. Yeah, they just and them up. The yeah. tuck and roll bumper cars are so slow, you can't make a full this revolution in the ride time. But that new yeah. Cars ride where they dance is adorable. Cars I Land is great. That ride. It, it stands yeah. out from the rest of the park. It's, so it's immersive, fun. interactive, the, and fun. The best part is when you spin around in the cars and they do like little line dancing <laughs> like so new cute. cars ride. It's so but, much fun. But we got to ride, uh, what was it called? <laughs> The floating one. The tire ride. The Luigi's tire ride. ride. Oh, okay. okay, Bethany and I went on that for the first time when he took us to the park one day, right? 
and we've never been on this ride, so what happened was they would put several people in the little waiting area to go on. They would give you a ticket to, like, a little plastic pass thing to go on to the tire. And the woman, there, oh, there's obviously no running, so she would say, walk with a purpose, people. Oh, my God. And so Bethany and I, we walked with a purpose, and we're run to the tires. And when I step onto the tire, I didn't see, like, the don't step on this part of the tire. So I stepped well, through no. the tire. That's what I was going to ask <laughs> yeah. you. Didn't the tire, which went out much wider than the ride vehicle, Correct. had a big thing that said, don't step here. And I, <laughs> yeah. you'll rip it. You'll as, rip it. But as a short guy, I said, how am I supposed to get yeah. into the ride vehicle? Is somebody going to give me a boost? It didn't work. And then when the ride was operating, we barely moved around like oh. five feet. We moved like... All that money. And then it's just one of those over. things where they did it. The flying saucers were a thing. Right. They failed. John Lasseter really wanted to bring it back. You can't go home again sometimes. You know, there's a reason some things fail. Those things actually look like a better experience because those things really bounced and hopped around. Yeah, but like... Lawyers didn't really chop them down and make them so have we learned nothing from tron legacy sometimes you can't go home again i predict the company's <laughs> strategy is every 30 years release another tron movie that loses a lot of money and might just look a little better than the other one yeah well, exactly yeah, all yeah. all style right, no, right, no right. Substance. if i if i was in charge of dca why now if i, I if that. i was i go why at this moment yes i would take out all of hollywood land and just build the grid Oh my god. You can have Zootopia, The Gwyn, Cosland, these amazing theme the immersive like lands. That, that, that electronica did, did was you amazing. See, did you see Zootopia? I did. What did you think of Zootopia? It was cute. I loved it. I know a lot of people, a lot of Simpson people worked on that. Yeah. A lot of I Simpson had a problem with its little message. It's very preachy and very PC. It was very, way too PC, and in a way that... It was aimed at children, which that's, I think I have a yeah, problem that's with. It's the flavor of the day is this PC. I can't stand Because in the context of the film, Judy Hopp mm. gets attacked by a fox. Right. And then later in the movie, uh, a fox is made to look like it's going to attack her. And she recoils. And the guy's basically like, so you're racist against all foxes. Because we're not all alike. I'm not going to attack you. And you're like, no, no, I've seen the movie. Yeah. You made like you were going to attack her. She had every right to smack you in the face and mace you. But the idea now is like, you can't be proactive defensive. Does that make sense? You can't like, look, I need to work out for my safety. because I. But you can't because looking out for your safety might offend somebody's delicate little feelings. Oh, I, never I could care that. less about... Well, listen, listen, the movie opens with Nick... Wild? Yeah. Nick Wild's a friggin' a-hole. He's so offensive to everyone. He, he so is a con he... man jerk-off. Right. And by the end, we're supposed to care what is... He didn't care about anybody's feelings at the beginning when That's he was exactly ripping everybody off. Why is Nick like Wild offended by Judy? When that's not his personality. That's completely out of character for him. That is the lesson of the movie overtaking the structure and characters that were deliberately set up. What were you going to say? Like, well, what you said about, like, why would he care about Judy? Well, I think that, um, like, the whole Well, process, she goes to bat for him. Yeah, like, the whole, like, purpose of their relationship, I think, is to show that a character like Nick that you're introduced can turn to a good guy. Like, how he didn't, like oh, see, he I think, he didn't care I about think, anyone. I think we're all inherently good. Some, pe some yeah. people are jerk-offs, and we got to deal with that. But I think we're all inherently good. And these movies that come out and scold you, like, you've got to know, and you've got to treat everybody that's... No, 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 no. Like, Nick's a criminal in the movie. And what's the message of that movie? Like, the lion that everybody thinks is the bad guy... Because he's a predator, because he's a meat eater, he's he's the good guy, and the bad guy is the little sheep, lamb, sheep was. lady. Because yeah. she wants. It's another in a long line. Remember the Land Before Time movies? Yes. Yes. Everybody who eats meat's a bad guy. Right. Mm -hmm. The vegans are the good guys. Right. I'm so sick of that. God, am I sick of that PC I, I nonsense? I guess they would do that because those are more vicious animals. I know, but the underlying right. theme is, well, if you eat it salad and stuff, you'll be much more calm. Well, I mean, if you look at Disney's most recent film lineup, um, look at WALL-E, another Disney film that is I couldn't stand wall -E. and I never watched now, it. I, I, I know we've never seen it, but I do know the movie. Do you know what Cars 2 is about? Cars 2? Yeah. Oh, Cars 2. No. That does Let me explain. Oh, no. Cars, <laughs> no. Do not talk oh, wait, wait, wait. How did we get and to this place? we're not going to talk about Cars 3. Here's what I will say. I don't know what Cars 2 is about. 
But Spies. any message that it has is totally negated okay, by its racist Japanese. Because it is, view. without a doubt, the most preachy Disney movie. Oh no! Ever What's it about? Made. It's all about replenishable fuel. Oh. What? Oh. Yeah, really. It's a. It, oh, that's where all the gasoline cars are yes. the bad guys. I just got it. a lot of pee and fart jokes, and I turned it off. Well, I didn't even get. I didn't get any of that. It's about electric cars, right? Yes. Oh. And I recommend you guys look up some reviews. Oh. I highly recommend Mysterious Mentor. M M Mysterious Mr. Entor, his animated atrocity series, is incredible because he does a non biased view on these shows. And he does point out multiple times in the. Because he reviews a lot of modern cartoons, which are very message heavy. And he does point out why do we need to have these messages? That are so prevalent in these things. Why do they have to That's be? That's a so good crazy? question. Actually, they used to be just solely for entertainment. Yeah, they would slap each other or they hit yeah, each other right. face with a pie or something. No, now it has to have. And the well, no, I, th I think what you're missing is I don't think they have to have these. I think that that the people who make them have an agenda, and the agenda is we're going to indoctrinate kids in a way that they don't feel indoctrinated. You know wow. what I mean? Because I, listen, I've talked on the show about my weird views. I don't believe in climate change, and climate change is taught to people as fact. It's not an opinion. It's not an idea. It's a fact, and that's where I'm like, well, is there no wiggle room there? You're right, and I'm wrong, and that's the way it goes. And the Earth is getting hotter, and we're all going to die if you don't reuse your plastic bag three times. And I that those bags that scolding Ooh. thing just gets old after a while, and so many shows. And I remember it go, it was all the way back to um, you remember Pepper Ann. I can't say that I do. It was a cartoon that uh, Luna used to watch when he was a kid. Nickelodeon and, or something? Uh, yeah, I think so. And Pepper Ann was a show about a girl whose parents were divorced. And I'm like, well, why is everybody so down on? Is that's why The Incredibles is so damn good. Because mom and dad really love each other and take care of their kids. And that's like the anomaly now. Everybody's parent is dead, dying, abducted, killed, run off, whatever it is. And it gets old after a while. Nobody has parents. And that's what I missed. Like, the best I'm line... i think. I can't think of anything right, right now. The yeah. best line in The Incredibles is when, um, when uh, uh, Elastigirl comes in and she goes... She he thinks she thinks that he's cheating on her with um mm. what's her name? Yeah, that girl with the white hair. Yeah, what's the silver haired girl? I don't remember. Yeah, like it's like Rolls Royce or something. I know it's like that. And he just looks at her and he goes, "How can I cheat on the most wonderful woman in the world?" And oh. he's not being. Yeah, right. It's not a line. He just yeah. he, he completely means it because he thinks. Remember the scene? He thinks she's dead because syndrome has launched and blown them up. And so, to me, that's such a more real, emotive, emotion-filled moment than any of this, I don't have a dad and I'm looking for a dad, every single movie. I, I think another thing I look for in these movies is the creativity. I think that's why I like Zootopia so much, because even if it is, its plot is a bit all over the place and its message is uncertain, it does have creative characters and setting, which I think is a lot of things. Yeah, but it's, it's and I'm not trying to argue that you can't like it. You can like, obviously, whatever you want. I just think it's time to get past that that stupid trope of we're going to present the world if somebody else was in charge. Yeah. And everything's clever. You know what I mean? Yeah. And everything's a pun. Everything's a pun. Let's oh, get God. Can we move Way too many in that. Can we move past all that? I mean that that peaked with the dung heap called Shark Tale. Oh, oh God. You I know could, what I mean? Wait, wait. Was oh. that the DreamWorks movie? That's the DreamWorks I movie. Oh. They yeah. Me out. They made me take them. I spent 50 bucks mm. watching that movie. Mm. Where Christina Aguilera shows up as a fish singing Car Wash while they wash a whale. So, yeah. <laughs> it's got beat, Robert De Niro. Now, now, Austin, if these weren't talking animals, would you still have this love of this movie? I know you, you like the talking animals a lot. I probably wouldn't. Aha! Yeah. There we come to the center of the shrubbery maze. Yeah, if they were just humans, the talking animals. I probably just would have passed it off as, oh god, another bad DreamWorks Another PC film. cartoon. Yeah. But wait a minute, that fox is standing upright and he's wearing a shirt. Yeah. Hmm. <laughs> he thinks he's people. There's something to this. I'll give it a second gander. What'd you think in all of the Simpsons movie? I didn't see it. I saw it. Oh my god. No. Seen the I didn't really? see it. Really? Didn't I see it. It's good. No. That's I I used to work on the Simpsons. That is we're, correct. We're not going to get into that. As, we'll do a whole episode about that, but I promise you. I, I find that fascinating that you didn't see the movie. Uh, because it does the same thing that Star Trek did where the TV show has this one look and the movie looks completely different. 
Like the Simpsons in the movies, they look so rich and expensive compared to the television version. Then the, Doesn't the TV version now looks like that? The though? TV version has caught up to it. Right, they had right, to right, right. because everybody saw the movie and it's right. like, well, how come it don't look like that? Right, because we're not drawing it anymore. Well, <laughs> yeah, that, right, that, yeah. Was, that movie was the main reason why. That's fascinating. Well, didn't you leave The Simpsons right as they were like starting to talk about the movie? No, they were. This is a whole different story. Whole different oh. story. But you gotta love um, Harry Shearer, who's like, "Look, I'm not interested in a movie. Have a good time." Uh, that guy. Mm. <laughs> I, you can't talk. I get well, it. Well, I could. T- I guess. Who's your favorite Simpsons character? Character was the comic book guy. Oh, comic book guy. Because whenever and I, when I first got the gig, I thought, "Oh my god, I'm finally gonna learn the comic book guy's name." So I flipped to the model <laughs> sheets, and it said the comic book guy. I felt. <laughs> they- like little Ralphie in the bathroom going, what? That's that's it? Be sure to drink your Ovaltine. Oh my, that's exactly it. I was so disappointed. I think, I think he has a name now. What's that? What's Ovaltine? It's like a chocolate milk mix. Oh. A very, very healthy, not yeah. very delicious It's not very good. Milk. No, it's not. You it's never like, knew what he was like reading up until this point. It's like Muselix. Oh, it's, it's not pleasant. Yeah, his name is Jeff Albertson. I know. I knew that, you would know that. That was much later in the show. Right, 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 right. It's Jeff Albertson. It's when he dated uh, the, uh, Skinner's mom. Oh, my God. Uh, I was there season mother, eight through Mother, season who are you 14. dating? I'm dating a man, you know. Wow. Oh, I love the wheel. Oh, Agnes, you know. I like Maggie. I can't, that's a weird pairing. I can't see the two of them together. Oh, yeah, no, it's disturbing. Wow. The, you know what? The the uh, crux of the episode was they were a couple because they hated all the same things. They were oh, united Oh, they both hate. hated. That makes yeah, sense. it's cute, right? Do you like the episode where um, Bart and Milhouse are running the comic shop? That is quite clever, yes. I love that episode. I ran a comic shop. I used to own 21st Century Comics. In that's got to be great. That's gotta be like the greatest gig ever, running it a comic shop. It was. And I, I, if it's making money. It wasn't. Yeah. Here's the thing. I ran it like Santa Claus. If I saw some little kid came in, he couldn't afford something, I'd give him a discount. I gave so much free stuff away to kids. Yeah. And kids came to the store. It was a very family-friendly store. I got rid of the adult section that that guy had. I turned it into a game room. Everybody's they could, hugging They could it. play hero clicks. Oh, God, that room creeped me out in there. I remember my wife and I throwing all that stuff out. I didn't even want to sell it because I didn't well, even want to know who would come in to get it. That was a whole thing because we used to go to Golden Apple mm-hmm. uh, in Hollywood, and Golden Apple had the two saloon, yeah, yeah, the they, saloon doors. They, right, right. And uh, you'd go in there for all the adult comics. Yeah. Those that was a whole weird out. subgenre of of, of nudie comics. Just buy a nudie magazine. I don't know why you got to look at a cartoon image. I, different some, strokes for different some, folks, I it, guess. It, it's a good pun. Yeah, but, but some, no, it's true. I didn't mean it to be one, but it some is. Some guys, yeah. some guys are so. If I had to figure out, some guys must be so shy around women, right, right, that they need to even step back from the printed, the real printed woman to a drawn, a cartoon image. one. Yes. Plus, you know, have you ever seen like uh, uh, J. Scott Campbell's art? No, oh, God, he's amazing. Like he draws some of the most beautiful, beautiful women. Women don't look like that. No, real women do not look like right. That. He's pushing things and he's right. Making, yeah. So, like, you can see almost where like I would go. Well, I'm into that. I'm into that version of a person, but that doesn't exist. Right. Right. Or like the anime girls, you know, they don't exist. Right. Like, I, used to like, big. I used to like the Dirty Pair, which sounds like an adult uh, comic, but it wasn't. It was just Ki and Yuri, two Japanese cops. There was one that was kind of cute. When I went to the Kubert School in New Jersey, where I learned to draw, there was a, a dirty comic book called Cherry Pop-Tart. I remember I heard Cherry Pop-Tart. It looked like Archie. Yeah. And Hi Eisman, this little guy, he used to draw Archie, this little Jewish man. And he used to, we brought him, somebody brought him a copy of this thing. And he's like, this, I hate this guy. Oh, he was so mad. Look at this. He has no reference to the female figure. Look at my drawings. He's stealing my style. Oh, he was so angry. Oh, this, this is terrible. And he's making more money because he owns this book. I don't own Archie. I just get paid per page. Oh, he was, oh, he was hilarious. And then the guy goes, can I have my comic back? Ah, uh, no, I need this for later. I I bought an issue of Betty and Veronica at the 7-Eleven across from the Kubert School, and I brought it in after the class was starting. We're all doing our lettering work, and I went, and I go, hi, I just bought this. He goes, oh, my God, it just came out. I didn't see it yet. Look at this. Oh, this is wonderful. Oh, it came out very nice. I go, would you sign my book for me? He goes, oh, my, I would be honored. And he writes, two Noel, hi, Eisman, blah, blah, blah. And he goes, there you go, young man. I've just doubled its value. And I go... Good, now it's worth two dollars. He's like, F you! Get back to your chair. <laughs> he didn't say that though. <clears throat> oh. Wasn't it funny that he's um lamenting what that comic looks like when it's so obvious like Betty and Veronica are are drawn to be sexy. Right, oh absolutely. Yeah, they're 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 flawless women. And somehow Archie is having to choose between the two of them. Yeah. Aww. 
That, that, that's a very un idea. That, I don't think that happens in real life. I don't know about you guys, but no. I was always for Betty. You like Betty better? <laughs> I, like I like Betty. I like Betty better than Veronica. Betty's which Betty one? or Veronica. Betty's, Betty's the blonde. The blonde. No, I like. I, I, have, I have to have the dark haired one. See, I like the dark. There's two Veronica. different personalities. Betty's wholesome and sweet. Veronica's sassy and rich. Yeah, and no, I, I want the crazy dark haired one. You want the crazy, snotty, That's what dark I married. The high maintenance hey, one? What are you yes. About? I don't know. She seems very. You're more Betty than you are Veronica, I think, personality wise. Oh, you, don't, oh, you don't know her. She'll cut you. Veronica's this spoiled rich girl. Did you guys um? Well, do you guys remember when um they came out with three different issues for the th to the t for the two girls where it would it would be like if Archie married Veronica? Yeah, yeah, the what if? Yeah. But yeah, they do very much sexual. They also had one where uh, the Archie Punisher died. came to town. Oh yeah, I don't have that and one. I have kiss. the one with Predator. The Predator? The Predator one. That, like, Archie? It's gory. Yeah, that, it, I, I, I was, like, question. sobbing. So gory. Oh Why God. do these exist, and what is the appeal of Aussie? I've never read an Aussie <gasps> comic, and I don't I care to read one. Well, here, see, see don't, don't, you can't judge something you've never seen. Well, well, you know what? Archie. We'll find out this kid. January if we watch Riverdale. <laughs> no, 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 that'll be Channel 5. I'm this curious. one where Archie gets... Killed. I would watch it. Yeah, I'm, I'm definitely gonna Archie, watch it. Archie, Archie, Archie died saving his gay friend. He did. Kevin. Yeah. It's like Twilight. But he leaps in front of him. Wait, like, like, like Kevin's gay? The guy was gonna kill that Kevin. That was the whole plot, yeah. yeah. He was gonna shoot him. The only Aussie comic I would like to find in weed is the Nights and the Dreams miniseries from 1996. But it's very doubtful. I wish I knew what the hell you were talking about. I don't know. About. I don't even know what you're talking about. I'm the a comic book nerd. Dreams. That's the one where Archie has a chicken strip. No, no, no. It was just drawn by the same artist. It's a tie-in with the Sega game that came out that year. Oh, okay. Oh. They do Sega comics. They yeah, do they do Sonic, Sonic comics. They do Sonic. Yeah. So they made the Nights into Dreams comic, and I'd like to read that. Hmm. Last year, they did a huge pitch to Nintendo. Archie's big plan was to have a Mario series, a Kobe series, a Zelda series, and a Metroid series. That'd be and great. All crossover. When did Archie come out? Like, what's the 40s. year? I think in the 40s. Yeah. I would say 46 or 47. He's, he's from Golden Age, Pep right? Comics. Yes, he is. Like, Pep Comics. I have comics. a little book that has, like, a collection of different Archie comics so, like, throughout the, the years. from like the first one be worth a lot of money? Oh, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Really? It, I, I have read the first one. It's he looks and different. Jughead's Very little, different. Little, little kids. Because I remember reading that when like I was around little, Josie's that was age. One of my favorite They're wholesome, and the stories, Austin. There's like four or five stories per comic book. They're all like they're all basically a joke, and it leads up to a punchline with him going "ooh" or yelling at somebody. You, you or know something. why Archie's comics are popular? Because your mom would go to the drugstore to get a comic book, and she didn't like the monster ones, or the superhero ones, so she'd go, "I'll get him the Archie one. Yeah. That one's gonna be wholesome and clean." Here you go. Look, they're at the malt shop. <laughs> That's the only comic that's selling grocery stores. Yeah, this little well, digest. The only comic you can buy. Because it's wholesome and right. parents will buy it. They won't buy the uh, Batman one. He's menacing. Well, he's, he's not published that way. Comic books now are considered up. collectibles. You have to buy them in a specialty shop. And they're very expensive. They used to be considered magazines. And if the store didn't sell them, they could send them back and get a credit for the next purchase. You like should be aware. If you purchase this magazine without a cover... Right. It was yeah, reported right, stolen right, correct, by the. I've read all that stuff. Yeah. So you ran a comic shop. I did. What I what it. era? What oh. what was the big event comic event during your era? Spider Man movie with Tobey Maguire came out. That was okay. Because remember, like you can count them. Like um, the Watchmen comes right, out. No. Dark Knight Returns comes out. Comic book wise, Death no. of Superman. Nothing, you know, the return right, of the Superman. Right. There were no big major comic the, events. Remember the Spider Clone yeah, series? Yeah, yeah. And yours was Spider Man. The, the movie, movie is came coming. Out. Hero clicks were big. <laughs> Hero clicks. Oh God, I sold so many of those. I bet they were huge. Century comics. She had a little badge. She worked there. I yeah. had a candy counter. I bought a bunch of arcade machines. I had a whole arcade in the back. I had a Tim Burton had, like, Batman arcade machine. I had a Superman the movie arcade machine. You must have wept the day that I you was, had to shut this I down. I sat in there crying. Yeah, That's awful. It just didn't make any money. If it made money, it paid itself off. In other months, it lost money. Yeah. And I had an event every month. I brought all my Simpson animator buddies out in the gaming room. I took um, desks from my wife's classroom, and I put them in there like a school, and I put presidents all around the room, and I put a flag in the corner. <laughs> so you went into Bart's classroom, and the animators were all sitting at the desks, and you get a drawing from them. And then in the front of the store, I had a big game show wheel, and I got this loud, obnoxious coat, and I had two game show podiums in front, and I got some jungle babes from the Jungle Cruise that I used to know. I dressed them in these little outfits, and they would the guests would come up, and you would try and beat an animator at trivia. How did, did I miss all you this? You would win prizes. Remember? one day um i don't know why we did but we had the joker and harley come it was our there. opening day 
and um, we had the spinning wheel, and what you would do, you would spin the wheel, and if you got like a Harley space, then you would get something nice and sweet, but if you got the Joker space, then you would have like a little prank. This is the greatest thing ever. I got these amazing ever. cosplayers there. One of the prizes was a wedgie from Harley. Uh, and then one of the presents. Oh, I know. That everybody now. wanted that. They would move the wheel. They wouldn't take the free stuff. They wanted this girl to rip their underpants up. It was Who, anybody we know. No, no, no. They were. I don't even remember what their names were, but they were. This fantastic is before cosplayers. the word cosplay even existed. They were phenomenal. I met they them at Comic Con. Got people who wore costumes. Yeah. I had a Batman uh, artist in there. I had Sandy Calora, the Predator sculptor, in Sandy there. Sandy Calora, Batman, yeah, dead in. I know. My wife is in the second one. Batman. Oh, I didn't know that. The, yeah. We're good friends with Did, Sandy. Didn't you have Jason Voorhees in your store? No, I never had him. Or Freddy Krueger. I almost had Robert England lined up. That was going to happen, but then I the shop closed. Sounds I, like a nightmare. It was. <laughs> oh, <laughs> I promised the, the customers I would have a special event or signing once a month. And I remember one month I couldn't get anybody, and this one customer, his name was Jay, and he cleaned pools. I go, Jay, what are you doing this Wednesday? He goes, well, I'm just cleaning pools. I go, how about you be my special guest? What are you talking about? I want you to bring your bucket and your, your pool cleaning stuff. Set it behind you. I'm going to put a little placard with your name on it. Ask Jay about any pool cleaning you need. You and I are so oh. much alike, it's terrifying. Mm. I had a karaoke machine. I kept getting on the mic, attention shoppers. There'd be like one guy in the store. He'd be like, what the, are you talking to me? And I'd be did you ever go, oh, now yeah. on sale. Did you go, ah, 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 ah. Oh. table five. No, table no, five. I didn't do that. But I love being on a microphone. I miss my Jungle Cruise days. I used to be a Jungle Cruise skipper. Yeah, what was your favorite Jungle Cruise joke? Uh, when you've been in the jungle as long as I have, you begin to smell. Danger, that is. <laughs> the one yeah. I remember from a kid, as a kid, this is, how, uh, this is from the Jungle Cruise circa 1979. Yeah, yeah. He goes, uh, we had a celebrity on the uh, last cruise. Uh, it was uh, Burt Reynolds. And... Uh, he said he was going off to the uh, Tahitian Terrace to have lunch because it was the best place to dine ashore. That's terrible. Is that the worst joke you've ever heard? I think heard? I've heard that before, actually. I hired in there in 84, and all of those guys, this is just after the strike had happened, so most of those guys had all been there since the 60s. It was a very different place. They got like a dollar raise every year. Sure, sure. It wasn't this capped off wages every so It was very different. And that was their job. It wasn't like a, I'm only here for school. They, they were jungle skippers. We had guys who worked Sad Eye Joe yeah. at Knott's that wouldn't take a break. Because they worked there in the time when people tipped. What? So they would make $100, 100 $200 a day in tips. Hey, time to take a lunch. I ain't oh, taking a man. lunch. Wow. I'm not going anywhere. Wow. That's crazy. We're not allowed to take tips. But I remember one time this Texas-looking guy, he had a cowboy hat and a little string bow tie. He comes up and he goes, son, that was the greatest Jungle Cruise. And he put a $20 bill in my hand. I go, no, no, I can't. And I put it in my pocket. Thank you very much, sir. <laughs> Have a good night. Yeah, <laughs> you do that? He was, no, he was, he was like, totally, I wish he had those. That would have been But better. doesn't Disney have that three, three rule? Correct. You have to refuse it three times. Right, no, no, I'm, thank you, sir. Before you like, take it? Yeah, like everybody's, uh, what, what, what's, what's, um... What's Will Ferrell's name in uh, Austin Powers? Oh, Mufasa? Oh. Yeah, and he goes, look, uh, uh, I only I have to ask me three times. It just it irritates me. Mm -hmm. So like, if you, Right, it's exactly if like somebody that. somebody goes, here's right. $20, no, I can't take it. I insist, I can't take it. <laughs> look, you're going to insult me. All right, I'll take it. Damn, three times. Right, 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 right. I've only, uh, uh, when I first started at Knott's, the guy who taught me in the jail, Ralph, guy came up to the window and Ra Ralph was 84. Oh, dear Lord. He's the guy who taught me. And he, go, I, I, uh, he goes, well, you sit here, and they're going to tell you who the name of the kid is, and you say hi to the kid. And the guy goes, my kid's name is, you know, Robert. Here you go. And put a $5 bill down. And I said, Ralph, what do I do when they put a $5 bill down? He goes, you don't do nothing. And he put it in his pocket. Oh, my God. He took your money. Oh, yeah, of course. What? Because it was his shift. Wow. He was just training me. You don't do nothing. And after oh, that, I never got a tip no. again. The, Do they still tip today? No, society don't. change. No, people are so tight now. They, do they even talk to Sad Eye Joe anymore? Yeah, they do. He's popular, but it's we not. Do. It's not. It's not like it was. You know, nothing is like it was. I remember there was a line for him when I was a kid. Yeah. Oh yeah. No. I and do that too. foot, that prostitute's foot hanging out. It scared the hell out of me. I'm like, what is? What are they doing to that woman in there? What's, when I was a kid, what is, I was so what scared is happening up there? I I thought something bad. I was frightened. What well, greatest days? I get to go up and see the mechanics. Oh event. dear lord! I would. Freak. I was like, I took a picture of it. I was oh. Like, oh my god. Move? It kicks. Oh, yeah, it really pulls the thing. No, the he? guy in the booth uses yeah. a foot pedal. Mm -hmm. It's very archaic. Yeah, but yeah. it's wonderful, though. Yeah. That leg reminds me of inside his dad's house because there's oh, one no. section in my grandfather's room 
that when he was in the attic one time when he was around my age, he accidentally stepped on a spot you're not supposed to step on in the attic, and he his leg went through completely. The ceiling, I was, so. When she said the leg reminded of your father, I was terrified. Really? Where I was going. <laughs> when I was in a, so oh, because, I get no, him. no, 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 not nothing like that, <laughs> but. Because to cover up the hole because he didn't want to patch it up, he just put like a fake leg up there. Oh, that's great. Yeah. I, tr- I, I want a fake leg so bad. I've had the opportunity like three times to buy a prosthetic leg. Mm-hmm. Like and my wife galaxy. won't let me. What are you going to do with it? Yeah, exactly. I don't know. I just <laughs> want it. Let him have Guardians it. Guardians of the Galaxy. No, she I, I she says it's legs. bad juju to have it in the house. Juju is just plastic. What about that baby? That's worse juju than the, the I leg. I agree on that baby. I hate I that baby too. I want the leg. I would like to have a fake leg. I would like to have a fake eye. Don't say these things that out loud. That sounds great. Send them to you. That's, I, that's me, cool, man. You're listening out there. I like chocolate chip cookies and let me tell you. Let me tell you why you don't need that fake leg. Because oh, no. for those not listening, not I mean, for those not aware, I, <laughs> you're not listening. We can just say whatever we want. Uh, for people for those, not listening. For those not aware, you're, you're addressing a lot of people when you say those not listening. Um, my dad bought a CPR dummy. Do you know what those look like and how terrifying they are? Like the one in the office. Yeah. There's one that Dwight, Dwayne, Dwight stabs on the office. Why? And he bought it. And but it this one's different because it's... A baby. A baby. Mm. It's so scary. It has a removable plastic face. Oh. And this is one of those things where he's like, I have to have it. And we're like, what are you going to do with it? And he's like, I don't know. And guess what he does? He hides it in he my bedroom in like various places. You open places. your drawer, your underwear drawer, and there's fucking babies in there. Oh, oh that's what we found today. We yeah. found it in Austin's room, and we hid it in your I chair. I don't hide it. It just goes <laughs> where it wants you guys. That's the right answer. That's the right answer. <laughs> the last thing I need is a it's leg haunted. in my bedroom. I would love a, a, a peg leg thing. Oh but but I don't God. want one of the new ones. I don't want, like, um, Forrest Gump, like Lieutenant Dan. Right, right, right. No, I want, like, a... A really old one. Old, yeah. Got, you ever see that crap fest, uh, Law Ranger? Which, the Johnny Depp one? Yeah. I did see that. Where uh, Helen Bonner Carter's got like a scrimshaw oh, leg. No, and every, no. t- every time she s- sews it, yeah. the guys are like, mm. oh, it's the greatest thing. Mm. They all get hot, and mm. you're like, what world is this? Mm. That was one of the worst movies I've I ever seen. I worked the premiere of that. Uh, yeah, I, well, you I went around, and all those people uh, waiting in line, I, I drew pictures for them all day to entertain them. Listen, we're, we're here to see my movie, The Lone Ranger Draws a Picture of the Lone Ranger. Um, you know, the coolest thing is I got to see the horse. Silver? They put a pen. Yeah, that was yeah. beautiful. Beautiful white horse right in front of our building. Yeah. That was, I'd like seeing that horse more than I like seeing Johnny So you, you work at California Adventure. Correct. And you do a little show. The Animation where Academy. You, you teach people how to draw. Correct. I'm up on stage. And he's very good at it. 150 good. people come in every half hour. I only do stick people. And I how show them how to draw different How many characters. shows an hour? Two an hour. I'm sorry. How many shows in a day? Usually about six. So you do six shows Correct. a day. I sit in the back and I draw zombies the rest of the time. And uh, yeah, and, and put them on Facebook. Or monsters. Right. Yeah, 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 right, right. That's basically yeah, that's my it's. It's always like greetings from here, and right, it's some, right. some, some morbid, disembodied. Right, right. See, you need a fake leg, but it's cartoony to complete though, your still. monsters. A fake leg? Yeah. Fake body? I don't know. I don't know what I would do with you it. You see, you should have a. You, you put you tuck your leg under like Lieutenant Dan. Right. You put the fake leg there, and you sit, and when you turn, you go, "Welcome to Animation Academy," and then leg flings off. And everybody feels really bad for you, but then you draw really good, and they go, wow, he's even better. See, this could be a new wing. You could make YouTube videos where we go out in public and do really freaky stuff and freak out people we, in with public. With the leg. We can Legs or any other things we can think of. We yeah. Can, we can put it on Mutini. I need the leg. But here, see, the sad part is this. How much are they? Have you looked into this? Uh, it depends. The last one I looked at was 100 bucks. That's a was, lot of money for just like a gag meet. gift. I it was at the swap meet. Yeah. <laughs> but like, but like, here's the thing though. It's not. This is not a esoterical thing. Like, I've actually seen the legs for sale. Mm-hmm. Like, I've like had a conversation with a guy who's like, "Look, I have a leg to sell, and you want to buy a right, leg?" Right, right, and right. And I go, "How much is the leg? A hundred bucks." Now, see, I was in the twenty dollar range, so oh, we, we, we couldn't, we couldn't come. We, he didn't have a leg to stand on. So but I'm bump. Oh, that's so bad. You know, it was a little shaky. It's got to be worth more than that, though. Just twenty. That, that was somebody's leg for Pete's sake. Right, no, the difference is yeah. it was one of those older ones. Right. With so like a lot of straps The guy and stuff. was dead long ago. Yeah, yeah, but if it, it turned into... What, like what if it was haunted? A haunted leg you're bringing into your house yeah, or something? Yeah, exactly. See, he doesn't believe in ghosts like I don't either. That would be That's, great, yeah. too, a haunted... I don't believe in ghosts, You but... could tell people it was. Yes. Yeah. That's a great thing. Our building has this really old man 
is, is, yes! He's a greeter in front of the building. He's scary. And we were training some new employees, and I said, oh, did you, did you tell them about the building being haunted? And the trainer's like, no, what are you talking about? Oh, there's this old fella named whatever his name is, and uh, he, he died in the building several years ago, but he used to stand out front training, but like, oh my god, we saw him! I go, you did not see him, and they really, oh, believe me, they thought great. there was a, a ghost in the building. That was awesome. Oh, it was a ghost with trainer pins. Correct. <laughs> this guy does look like... Go. I mean, he, you, you you have a lot of we you're weird like me. Have you ever oh, yeah. wanted to buy something weird and your wife is like, look, no. Amiibo. That's about as weird as it gets. Amiibos. Now. Yeah. Nintendo oh my, Amiibos. I have spent way too much money. It's insane. I own every Amiibo except for like four or five of them. It's wow. embarrassing. I know. That's what a do you, lot. What do you do with all of these? I things? stare at them every day Are when I come home. I'm like, up, oh. Like, all the new ones that came out towards Christmas time, there's been new ones, mm -hmm. right? Yeah, maybe I have. Oh, I just found maybe. out from Austin. Yes. Mm -hmm. We found a link. Amiibo playing the Ocarina yesterday at a GameStop. Oh, this was horrible. And we were going to buy it, but it just so happened all the computers and cashiers at the GameStop we were at, it broke down. They and couldn't they sell were, it to you? They no, didn't, no, they, they couldn't sell any they merchandise they to didn't anybody. They tell anybody, so all these people were just waiting in a line. And we were waiting there for a good About 15 minutes I stood there, not moving. Minutes. And I, I eventually went up and like, hey, how long is this going to take? Because we got to go somewhere. And he goes, oh, we're just starting up now, miss. Thank you for your patience. And they go back there, and another five minutes pass, and they're not starting up. They're not even doing anything. I and so we're livid. like, we're just like, screw it, let's just leave. And At then that point, I left. He's like, that's, that's like the rarest amiibo you guys found in the Link one. We're just like, oh. Right, yeah. Thanks for rubbing it in. <laughs> my, my, was that a, is that a rare one? Um, uh, not at the GameStop here. They had a couple of them. You can find it, you just told but me it's going to take rendered. you a few stores. Well, they didn't get my money that store. That's for darn sure. I was pretty upset. I want to find this. I'll store. take my business to Amazon. Austin has his Amiibo right here. I'm using him as drawing reference. See, right I don't even really know what the heck that character is, but That's it was part of this line of Nintendo. I had to buy all of them. Kirby. Most of those characters, I don't even know who they are. I'm not, you, I'm not Japanese. I don't know. Did but you I get love the, uh, oh, I love the Donkey Kong Amiibo Skylander combo? No, I did not. He has that. The bottom switches from Amiibo yeah, to Skylander. That's the, you have to buy that whole big thing to get that. Oh, he got that. a $2. He, Austin's what? savvy. What? Go get him. Austin's oh, savvy. But do you know why I have a fascination with these? With Amiibos? Yeah. Because you want to be like Noel? Well, <laughs> the, the reason I really like these things is because I wanted these when they were revealed two years ago. And we didn't get to see them at retail because at the time I was completely unaware. Like, I just thought they got canned. Typical Nintendo. They canceled them. Mm -hmm. I didn't know they wanted no, they to just had 600 apiece. Bad distribution. Yeah. Was it like horrible. the Wii Fit girl, like a thousand bucks yes. or something? They I paid retail price for her off a Walmart <laughs> shelf. They were ridiculously well. I would say you like them because having raised you, I've had to deal with knack knacks, attack ticks, mighty beans, yeah. and this is just the mighty natural beans. progression of mighty that. Beans? The mighty beans, I was super waiting into. waiting outside the store, just waiting to get one of them, and you might not even get one. Like when we wait. Amiibos, you're talking about? For, yeah, well, for, yeah, for Dark Pit. The Do you remember Vectrex? A name sounds familiar. I can't tell you. Vectrex what it was. was the the computer the computer the game system that came out. Um, that had its own monitor. I the, do remember and this. The, and the controllers detached from the front. Right. And the, the the gimmick with Vectrex was you could slide in a colored... Right, and it changed the color of the screen. And it changed the screen, yeah. I'm sorry, Austin, go ahead. Well, I was saying that I, I the, the first video games I can ever remember playing was Super Smash Bros. Melee, and then Super Smash Bros. Brawl, a game that I was ridiculously hyped for. And the collectible in that game are Nintendo action figures. You can look at them and read about them. And as a kid, I was always after those. Got to collect the figures. And I would just stare at them and think, you know, if these were real figures, I would die to have them because I always wanted toys of what I liked as a kid. That Star Wars character? Oh, I have to have his figure. A uh, good example is, Dad, do you remember Refreshments Man? From the of Clone course Wars I do. Movie. Worm Loathsome from the Clone Wars movie. As soon as I Man? saw that guy on screen, yes. I thought... Where's his action figure? I need it now. Did they actually make one? Yes. So you got it, I bet. Yes. Good for you. But the problem with Nintendo was, from the time I was alive, when I, the time I was a kid, 2000... They don't make a lot of toys. No, they no. don't. That's the no. bottom line. Yeah. They didn't make Nintendo figures. You could only go to the store and buy a Nintendo figure as of about a year and a half ago. Remember that Sarge car you wanted that if you licked, you got high? Yes. What? Whoa. That's why I wanted it. <laughs> wow. You don't remember that? 
No. Sarge was painted with the wrong lead paint. Oh, the Sarge from the toy st- the, from the cars. cars, right? Yeah. I did yeah. not know that. Do you remember the aqua dots that acted as uh, date rape yes, drugs? Yes, I remember that. <laughs> they had to dis- they discontinued it, but then they brought it back. As, they like, they pixels. fixed them. <laughs> yeah, they fixed them. I have no great love of the Smash Bros. These just remind me when I was younger playing Nintendo. I mean, I that's why I like the them figure so much. I'm holding right now, King DDD. This isn't just a figure. This is King DDD, a character I've always wanted a figure of. I grew up playing Corby. I He's love a Corby. mean penguin with a yeah, hammer. Yeah, no, I can I can understand that because when I was a kid, there were Star Wars characters. I was mm. like, why didn't they make that guy? Or yeah, or, or, more, or more importantly, they made that guy, and I'm never gonna get Han and Carbonite. Mm. And then when I got Han and Carbonite, I was like, oh, that was oh, that was a, that was a big moment when I got that one. That um, was a good one. Good. The two I wanted: Luke as a stormtrooper, yeah. oh, Luke, oh, Han and Carbonite. Oh, when I got them, I was like. These are the greatest friggin' toys. I think I paid two hundred bucks for my ever. Luke and, with the stormtrooper helmet. Because uh, most kids lost the helmet. That was a hard one to yeah, find. Yeah, no, I I got mine at uh, Toys R Us five bucks mm. but at the end of the line, and then had in Carbonite. I traded a guy for so, and then Yak Face had a Yak Face. Ah. And I, and I grew up you having Blue Snaggletooth. I grew up. I got Blue Snaggletooth for Christmas '78. Sears exclusive. And I kept it the the, the whole time. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. No, I I was Star Wars, Star Wars, Star Wars. When I was a man. kid, why no Grand Moff Tarkin? Why? Because Kenner figured nobody wants the old man guy. You He's know? a major part of the story, though. I wanted yeah. that figure so bad as he a kid. He destroys Alderaan. And, right, and it wasn't until the Power of the Force line that yeah. they, they gave themselves permission to go back in time. Because remember, it was the Star Wars line. Right, right, they always went forward. The You're Emperor right, right. line, and the Jedi, Jedi line. And then, and then the Power, Power of the, the Force, Force right. they were all new, but oh, wait a minute. There's Luke as a stormtrooper from the first movie. Mm-hmm. And then everybody s- figured out how to make hand in stormtrooper, right? Remember that he was a Fruit Loops uh, right. mail away. I made my wife, oh God, this is terrible. But when we first got married, we ate so many Fruit Loops so I could get so many of those. Or was that the Invisible Obi Wan figure? That was, that was the, another one too. That was the Frito Lay Spirit of Obi Wan. Oh, it was Frito. Yes. God, you outnerded me. You're right. I ate all those oh, yeah. damn chips. Remember oh. Puzzle pieces? Yeah, mm. we, we, we ate a. Every Star Wars promotion. Yeah. We, are you kidding? I Fruit Loops. We ate so many Fruit Loops. I don't like Taco Bell. Do you know how much Taco Bell I ate for the special edition and then episode yeah. one? See, Epis- I, didn't, I didn't do oh. that. The Sith line that had 40, 40 I didn't think the toys were that good. That's why King. I didn't go for those. Those toys just weren't that good, Wait, I didn't the think. the toys for episode one? Which one? The special edition toys. Oh. I didn't. Oh no, those, those are like the, some little thing you'd spin on a Tie Fighter yeah, or pop out of it. Yeah, in retrospect, or... they were the best ones. They were gimmicky. Eventually, they just did those little deformed ones, which yeah. I Austin played with for days, but I I didn't care I for. I love those so much. Yeah, he he really liked them. I know they spend the money on some figures. I love more tangible in my Star eyes. Star Wars figures. Star Wars figures. Bethany and I, my older sister. We played with them. To me, when it, we were little, when buying saw... Star Wars figures was therapy. One time, Rachel, I came home and she had cut her hair and dyed it or something, and I was ticked off. I, I don't did a pixie short hair cut, and it was platinum blonde. And I had I went that night to get our Disney annual passes mm-hmm. renewed, so I have that one photo. I looked at her, oh, wow. and I was like, because when I met her, Hated she it. had black hair yeah. down to her rear end. Oh wow! And then she did that thing that all women do when they get a new man and they change everything, and you're like, no, no, no. I, I, I fell in I, love with that. I fell in love with a look here, and I don't drink. So my therapy was, I went to Toys R Us, and I bought a whole stack of Star Wars figures. And I was like, I need these to make I feel good about myself. This is, oh, man. I remember I, I was so into those. I would drive from store to store. I'd go hit a Target, then I'd hit Toys R Us, yeah. then I'd hit a Target. I'd check each. I'd run to the back. A toy, and, toy run. And there'd be guys my age all in there digging through yeah. them. Yeah. Uh, I remember going oh. to Toys R Us La Mirada. It's not even there anymore. Yeah, yeah. And I went to the checkout, the return counter, and I said, hey, uh, what's that? And it was Lando. Remember when Lando mm-hmm. was a big deal? Uh, that's a Lando figure. Uh, can I have it? It's on hold for employees. I said, employees aren't allowed to have toys on hold. <laughs> oh, I guess they're not. You can have it. Wow. And I remember I remember getting in line, and the guy behind me tried to buy it. Wow. From me. Oh, yeah. Remember, 3PO was hard to find. Yeah. Leia Lando was hard was to really find. Hard. Lando was hard to find. Yeah, Leia was crazy hard. And she looked very mannish and un-Princess Leia-like yeah, what, and all. What'd they call it? You mean like Monkey the 70s? Face Monkey Leia. Face Oh, Leia. Lord. You mean no, like that's the, not PC. the 70s one? Like yeah. The ones you have in your no, not the 70s one. No, the the ni- ones that came out in the 90s. 95. The yeah. 95 reissues. The first 95 reissues were all done He-Man Luke, style. Yeah, exactly. I was going to say like He-Man. Like... There's a, I have a really buff Luke, and I'm yeah, like, that's it's it. not buff. They look totally ridiculous. They're but like they were joke. they were trying to 
put look, them on the toy shelves next to Spawn. Right. The toys of the day is what they were trying That's to That's what look they like, look like, right? right? And it took a long time for them to ease up and make figures that looked semi-normal. Now to get any of the good figures, you have to go to like places that sell old toys. Because yeah. I have no I was interest gonna say, in the new see, figures. You, you said exactly what I was going to say. There aren't any good figures There's anymore. hardly any figures in the, uh, ter- for sale at all. Now. Yeah. You got to go get old. Like the one, uh, one that I really want to have, I, I know it's, it's not like a big character, but I really want to have that green trilek in um, Return of the Jedi that gets fed to the Oh, Ula. 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 Yeah, yeah, she was a fan club mail away. But have they also released her... Was she released on a card, Austin? Uh, no. I don't think so, right? See, it, was, it was like a box. And then cloth, the fully articulated yeah, was one was released in 2010 with Jabba. I'm see, amazed how much you know, Austin. Yeah. Oh, yeah. my yeah. lord. I well, fully articulated one. I just want like the one that's like the ones that we see, the, got today. The yeah, day. to me, the best one was the Slave Leia that came with a second set of legs. So she could stand up or you could pop them off and then stick on her in seated position. I don't remember that. That, that was, was way late like in the 2010 line. Vented's collection. Yeah. I have oh, that I one. I never saw that. I have that one and I have... Remember the, the first one has a little chain hanging there. You could take that off of her neck. Yeah. The um, Bar 2 D2. Oh. Which is R2 wow, with right, right. drinks. I just love that figure. I just, wow. I'm I happy that, that exists. Existed. I didn't know that. I love that. Yeah. He can do all that stuff and they use him to serve drinks. Yeah. That's ridiculous. The whole collecto market has sort of sifted from Star Wars. There's no demand for any of the figures. There's zero demand. No. There's not a single figure you can look at in the self and go, ooh, I gotta get that one before it disappears. Uh, they will always be available. I kind of feel like that way now, searching for Star Wars figures. You want a Zuvia. Well, you know what's weird is like, I used to, we go to Target, and I would get a, a little rush on the, on the action figure aisle. Like, yeah. here we go. Here we go. I crack my knuckles and we're, here, we're, going, yeah. we're going in, you know, stay on Target. Right, Shop right. at Target. I would get that at the door going into the store knowing I had to hurry up and get to that right. back section. And I don't know what happened because they have the ability to make toys that I want. This, at this point, they just won't. I don't, I like don't these understand characters it. anymore. I don't well, like the, the new characters. The Rogue One characters are all really well, the Force, drab. Mm. The Force Awakens ones, they mm. didn't make any. Have we got a Luke Skywalker yet, Austin? You would have bought it. Have we got one for Force Awakens? No. Year later, no Luke Skywalker figure for Force Awakens. Unbelievable. Like, just now, like, last week I was just at Target with my boyfriend, and for the first time I saw a Rey figure, and there has been, like, no figures of her. Like, I've only seen Poe or this well, Kylo Ren. Well, no, there have been Rey figures. The problem is everybody keeps buying them. What? She's the one they buy, because she's packed with BB-8. So it's very attractive figure yeah, pack. Are, those are like the two best figures. Yeah, I, they're, the, main, they're main main characters. To me, I don't. No, I don't yeah, like them either. But they're the main characters. But here's the thing: uh, Disneyland, where you work, they're getting a little creative. They have a remote control mouse droid right now. Really? You know, the I did not see that. that. I was just follows... in the park the other day. <gasps> I know exactly. No, what a mouse the mouse droid. droid. The, the mouse one that droid. the one that Chewbacca, Chewbacca scares, oh, and he goes. Frank, yeah, that's totally that's a good impression of him. They make one, and the, it has a little controller and everything. And I'm like, all that is is a, a toy car right, right, with right. a different body. Shell over it. But yeah. that's the stuff I want. Like, yeah. I, the last big Star Wars thing I bought, I bought a Tusken Raider Gaffy stick. They have those at the park, too. That's the coolest thing ever. That's what I want. I want something that they go, we've never made it before. And again, I'm sorry, original trilogy stuff is what I like because I'm old. Right, right. I'm old. I was a Tuscan Raider for second grade Halloween. Were you really? I was. How'd you make that? My mom used a bunch of bandages, and my dad stuck some cardboard toilet tubes out my eyes, and they made like a robe, and I don't even think I had a stick. Now see, I, for seventh grade, I was Jedi Luke, so I had a black cape and everything, oh, wow. and my mother wanted to buy me um, a lightsaber, but I, the toy lightsabers were dumb, because they were always lit. Right, right. And I said, Luke rarely lights his saber. His belt. So I took a paper towel tube, wrapped it in foil, and hung it on my belt. That is the exact reason I never wanted one, because you couldn't wear it on your belt. Uh, yeah. That's what would... I wanted so bad as a kid, because he never... he. Oh, my God, you and right. I are alike. Yeah, did you ever see the droids lightsaber? No. I'll have to show it to have one. That's the one they made in 1985. It was the way end of Star Wars. And again, they made stuff at the end that was like, yeah. why didn't you make right, this right. to begin with? It's, the light, it's Luke's Jedi lightsaber... Mm-hmm. And you hit a button, and it pops out. It doesn't go out far wow. enough to be a lightsaber. Right, right, right. But it's, it goes out far enough that this is cool because it's vintage, and they never made anything. They just made those stupid whoosh, whoosh Right, ones. right. It had like a tube in it to make that noise. Yeah, right, right. I don't want that. Yeah. And it's always lit. 
Yeah. Like the like um you know at the Tomorrowland Star Wars store you can make your own lightsaber. Yeah, yeah. I would much rather prefer to do that rather than to get the one that I got because I didn't want to make one. Right. But, but those ones I saw different than the one I got. Mine just lights up and it goes wow wow. But with the other ones, it lights up. But when you fight, it goes a. Oh yeah, yeah. Too. They make yeah. an impact noise. It's much and it's much better quality quality too like it looks much better and it doesn't like go it doesn't get stuck it doesn't have like those plastic layers it's just like one tube and yeah you can just put it back in it's cool it's, looking it's awesome yeah, yeah and uh have you seen the uh umbrella ones those are cool that's too. very clever yeah very clever they sell a lot of those when it rains and they're oh, like yeah. 70 dollars yeah the funny thing about the build your own lightsaber is it's the same price no matter what you build so all the kids will build is darth maul because mm-hmm. they want the both right, for the right. same price. Where I'm like, no, I want Luke's saber. Mm-hmm. That's the one I want. Which one? The one, the original one he gets, or the, the one from Jedi? No, I like the original one. I, the one from Jedi, I was never a fan of. Really? I don't like the way it looked. It just looked like tubes or something. I thought that was so cool when I was a kid. I, well, I was in high school. I was in ninth grade. But when the, he lit up that, I'm like, oh my god, he made his own. Made his light. own. That blew me then away. You finally got to see this. The, the oh, I love that. The scene of him making it. Remember that in the Blu-ray. No, I've never seen that ever. Oh, it's a deleted scene on the Blu-ray where he's making the saber. You've just the, blown and the, and my he, mind. And then he puts it in R2's... Dad, we searched for an hour today. They you said don't you have own no Star Wars, Wars You don't own it at all. No, I don't own Star Wars. Oh, yeah, no. we, we, own Star we found Wars. two sets we of the same Robot VHS. Chicken because we couldn't find anything Oh, yeah, else. no, I don't have Star Wars on Blu-ray. It's 100 bucks. Yeah, we found we two sets of VHS form. copies of them. Oh, no, watch that's Star not Wars true. I have VHS. VHS. <laughs> two, set, two sets of VHS. <laughs> yes, and I, you know what? I have the special edition widescreen, which oh. those are VHS. Those cost me $50. Yeah, I bought those but when they came out, too. Forget that. I have the original One Last Time set, which yeah. came out in 95. Yeah, yeah, right, right. I bought it was that the too. last set that, are, that came out before the special editions where they're completely untouched. They took out my Yub Nub song. Yep, in yep. the special edition. I know. Yeah. I love that. So yeah. kids today have never heard that. No, and they they think Coruscant's always been there I with the toppling it. of the statue. They oh. think that the um the Jabba dance scenes have oh, the animated. The Jedi <laughs> rock scene. <laughs> what was the Jedi rocks? Right? <laughs> oh, it's so the bad. Of Rick McCallum. What we really Don't needed was a musical number. Yeah, right. yeah. He's All a, you guys name Rick. Stop <laughs> screwing up Star Wars. He's the biggest yes man I've ever oh, seen. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. They're like, I'm thinking of doing a. Oh, it's great, George. Each mm. scene is so dense, oh. so packed. Oh. Where's McCallum now? Oh. What's he screwing up now? I'm sure he's sitting on a pile of money somewhere. <coughs> you think be. so? I think he did pretty well. I think yeah. he made out pretty good. No, no. See, my new guy. Now, I've, I, Rick McCallum's a big douche. I don't care about him. The new douche I have is John Knoll. And God bless him. You know who John Knoll is? He's the special effects guy in all those videos for all the prequels. He's the guy who did all the hands-on stuff to get the movies. To... He's the one that pitched and got them to make Rogue One. Really? And I'm like, all you did was read The Crawl, dude, and go, there's a movie in here. Well, of course there's a movie in there. Give me a break. And water's wet. It, it's how, I don't know, that just looks like a story could... It, to me, I haven't seen it, but it looks like a story that could have been told in five minutes... Oh, no, How it, does this thing already, get from here to here? It's already been told. Yeah. It is a period of galactic war. Right, right. Rebel forces striking from a hidden base have secured their first victory against the evil galactic empire. Mm-hmm. It's all in the crawl. Yeah. We've already done it. We yeah. need a movie. We need a movie explaining <laughs> it because people like explanations. Yeah. You never heard the term mansplain? No. That's where it's a really derogatory term used by social justice warriors where if a woman doesn't understand, understand something and you tell her, you're mansplaining it. Because she, you, you assume she's too dumb to know. <gasps> this is the dumbest stuff ever, right? Mansplaining. That's so funny. the lesson learned is you can't help women. Now you mansplaining, mm-hmm. mansplaining. Oh uh, yes, you can't help women, you, right? He did just, he just mansplain. Right. So mm. the Rogue One is the mansplain version of Star Wars. Wow. It's a story we already knew, and yet some guy is gonna sit in a room and go, wait a minute. You all don't know the real story of oh. Star Wars. The real story is uh, Jen Orso. I don't even remember her name. Her dad, Galen Orso, built the Death Star. That's all you know. But what don't, people don't know is... You know, here's the pipe. What people don't know is he built a failsafe in it because he didn't like the Empire. So when Luke blew it up, 
He was just doing what Galen told him to do. Mm-hmm. Screw you. Screw you, John Knoll. Wow. I'm angry. Don't undo Luke Skywalker. I'll get really ir- irritated. Yeah, yeah. Oh, another thing. Why are all the like all the new Star Wars characters English? Uh, that's uh, c- t- continuing the tradition of yeah. They filmed ba- it all the bad guys were English in the first one. They were all extras. The, the heroes England. weren't. Yeah, yeah they were the heroes all, weren't. They were cast here. And that's the other thing. Uh, you, you know the movie, like, they bring back Peter Cushing from the dead, right? Digitally, don't they? Yeah. And that's terrible. Yeah, well, and he's, like, really angry the whole movie. Like, uh, Krennic, I'll take over here from now on. The Death Star's mine. And you're like, did you guys watch the movie? Is he really in it a lot? Oh, he's in it a lot, that yeah. Sounds, he's digitally animated. Yeah. That, that sounds horrible. That dead man can it do looks, nothing is... what. Uh, it looked very weird. That really bothered yeah. like, me. It looked really cool, but it looked really, like, video game-ish. It was, yeah, it was, um... It was the Star Wars Polar Express. Yes. That creeps me I out to it. no end. I can't oh, watch that. I've never, it was I've realistic. Never that, 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 that too, the same thing. Yeah. Oh, the Polar crazy. Express is terrifying. <laughs> it's uh, terrifying. I'm going to give you the first gift of Christmas. Oh, my uh, God. No, 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 don't do it. This, this bell. <laughs> and every time this bell rings... Oh. You'll think of our dead eyes. No, yes, it's the eyes. They never get the eyes. You're right, right. it's the eyes. It's so bizarre. I hate the Polar Express. Why don't I just put a camera at Tom Hanks standing on a train? Why do we have uh, to do this? This here is the Polar Express. Oh. And I'm the face of death. Oh, God. <laughs> and then there's that bum living on top mm. of the train. I hate it. Hate it. And I didn't watch it, it all. Did, did you ever see the Christmas Carol one? I couldn't watch all that either, but... Where, oh, that oh, one. Jim Carrey. J- Gary Oldman was Tiny Tim? No. Oh, it's so scary. <laughs> you know, you know. God bless. I love Gary Oldman, but he's not an attractive child. <laughs> what? Oh. Oh yeah. Good times. That's horrible. So yeah, but like they brought uh, Tarkin back from the dead, but they didn't bring back. Yeah, they didn't. There he is. Mm-hmm. That's but him. they didn't bring back Peter Cushing because if you see in the movie, and again, I'm beating a dead horse here. I always will give an example from the film. Tarkin is never outright menacing he's charming i think he's kind of frightening as a kid i was well, afraid a, of him but but he's a, but he's but he's he does it in a way that has uh, panache that thin smile he, he looks goes like... he goes princess leia oh. i you know you don't know how hard i found it to sign your death warrant and she's like well i can't believe you have the the, the uh, strength to do it yourself and they're yeah. talking in such a way like he doesn't go <laughs> you're going to die tomorrow he's not he the goes, doctor evil no he goes he, you know, he just, he's so charming and so, and that's where, I, 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 this is film 101. An outright bad guy villain is not menacing. He comes off goofy. A guy who says, I'm going to kill you, Mr. Bond, is not scary. Right. But a guy who goes, I'm going to put you in the airlock, Mr. Bond, and within three hours, you'll be dead. Oh my God, this guy means business, right? Uh, but they don't do that. They want to make him this serial villain. Like, he's like, the final plan and blow everybody up and everybody's dead. Because remember, <coughs> remember in Star Wars, the lead up to that scene is Tarkin is going to blow up her home planet. And kill millions of he's people. He's not killing a few people. No. He's killing everybody. Right. Every, every tree. Every, everything. Every animal. Right. Every microbe. There will be no evidence of Alderaan being there except a meteor shower. That that in itself is the evil part. If he was blowing it up, we wouldn't... I mean, it's... Think of, I mean, when you and I were kids, you were like, a million voices cried out in terror was suddenly silenced. No, wait a minute. He just killed everybody. This is a bad guy. This guy has nobody to look up to. This guy has to die at the end, painfully, yeah. horribly. But we're not at that anymore. We like bad guys. <coughs> we love them. Kylo Ren's the star of Force Awakens. Oh. Teenage wannabe. Oh my god. <laughs> Here's what I want. Oh. You know they have a. We're gonna wrap this mm. up. But you know they have a Kylo Ren meet and greet at Disneyland. That's I've done scary. it. She made me go right. To and he can yeah. talk to you like he manipulates. If you watch, yeah. he manipulates his hands. Right. And he goes like. You're coming to this you way. You know where the droid is. Yeah. yeah. It was it's, so scary. It's great. I love it. And Boba yeah. Fett does the same thing, right? Here's what I want. I want you to walk, because you go in for a private meeting with Kylo Ren. Right, it's right. Not, when, the, when, the, when your turn comes and you go to meet him, it's like directing you're in a, you. in a room you and him. just you. That's that's great. It that's is. the one-on-one. Nobody's watching. It's That way he can repeat all those phrases and you don't feel like, oh, he said that to the other person. Mm-hmm. No. It all feels real. So what I want is I want you to go in the room 
and the Disney person be there to stand there and go, it's gonna be a minute and then you hear him having a fit in the oh next room oh my god and do a light show of right meow, right meow, right meow, meow. and then he comes in and like wouldn't that be great like he just had a fit because he has a fit in the movie it's one right, of the best right. moments of the movie when those two troopers walk up and go we'll come back later you know what i mean oh you gotta see Rogue One so we can commiserate. I, oh. You need to see Rogue One, dude. I don't want to give them my money. I've seen it twice. I don't twice. Twice, man. I had what? the ma- well first the first time oh. I I fell asleep. Oh. I didn't want to come to your thing just because I didn't want to sound like the grumpy old man that goes, "Oh, I don't like Star Wars like, anymore." Oh no, like, I like the oh. beginning of the movie is very slow and it kind of takes a little bit for you to get into it. But the ending when they're oh. on the planet, there's and a lot of get, boom, boom, so boom, 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 boom. The ending is really where it. Pumps up and becomes a. Pew, pew, pew. I I don't know how you sat through that twice. Oh my god. I was for research. I was doing it for the show. That was you could yeah, write it, it off on his Texas. Like it. it was hard. It was hard because it was very boring. I didn't find it a very fun film. It was just I painful. Like, it was boring. Like the boring best part. The best part of that movie was seeing Princess Leia because I love Princess Leia. She's my favorite. And um, the new robot KS two O. Yeah, my favorite K-S-2-O. part of the movie was they took. Unused footage from Star Wars. Wow. Of Red Leader and Gold Leader cleaned it up and put it in the film. Really? So Red Leader and Gold Leader from Star Wars in a scene you've never seen are starting the attack run. That, that was the part. Because that was the part when it happened. I went, that wasn't digital. That was the real guy. Wow. I could, you could tell in an instant. And I'm like, yeah. that's really, that's Gold oh, Leader. Oh, okay. my God. And wow. then um, they blow up Red 5, obviously. So that Luke can take it in like three days. Wow. To, to me, that was the only good parts of the movie. The rest of it, I could take or leave. Love the Darth Vader scene, and he's killing everybody. Yeah, but it but, but it doesn't it doesn't match the other movie. Is the Did problem? Did you like the Darth Vader? Oh no, no. It wasn't a good representation. No, he's Arnold Schwarzenegger. First off, the costume looked bad. He, he had guy, like red eyes. Well, he has red eyes in, in the, the first original film. movie. Oh. He does. They, yeah. I, I talked about it in the other show. I know they were going for. He has to look like the movie. I totally get that. But um, has Vader? Does Vader ever do a, a Schwarzenegger quip? No, he didn't quip. He quipped. No. So this guy Still Krennic. The they showed Darth Vader's castle, mm-hmm. which is unused from Jedi. Right, right. right. And Krennic, Krennic goes there to find out if he's still in charge of the Death Star. And Darth Vader force chokes him without looking, and then turns and puts his fingers out and goes. Don't choke on your own aspirations, Krennic. No. That, I've seen that pose with his hand. I know. It's like a weird I, pose. I, a bunch of people, you know, most people, mm. normal people went, yeah. And I went, no, oh, my no, God. Did he just go like, no. uh, you know, stick around? You know oh, what I mean? exactly. Hasta la vista, baby. <laughs> you know what I mean? Oh, that's a nightmare. I'll go to a Last Action Hero when he shoots. He, he, he shoots an ice cream cone through a guy's head and he goes, Iced that one to cone a phrase. I want to oh see that God. again. I watched it when it first came out. I didn't care for it, but you have such a love of this. Oh, it's so it's so you unabashedly it. stupid. I want to see, Okay, then okay. We'll watch it. It's I great. I have that. it. Hey, I don't have Star Wars, but I have Last Action right, Hero. Right. <laughs> right. Hey, it's Noel Cox, everybody, on the show. Oh Let's hear it for him. Wow. You survived. I did. I didn't know what we were going to talk about. I still don't know what we talked about. It doesn't about. matter. We have an hour and 15 minutes of not talking about oh, anything. We were talking, like, talking about Carrie Fisher. We're talking, we're talking about, about anything. Food. Talking about Star Wars. Oh. Everything. Geek stuff. Just everything. I'm just happy to be here. I love this house and I love these people Me in it. Me too. I'm, I think I, I'm going to do a special episode about Carrie Fisher. Because yeah, I actually have memories to. of getting pretty close to her. And I got a kiss from her. Did you really? I got a kiss from her. She came on the Jungle Cruise. I was. This was a fun story. So I'll make it quick. I was about no, to take no. My, you go, this is good. I was about to take my fifth trip. I'd somehow gotten hosed over in rotation. You're only supposed to take three at a time, and then you get out and you get some vocal rest. I was about to. I'm like, wait a minute. Where's the guy? I was really mad, and the, the guy comes up, the lead, and he says, "You really should take the next one because look who's getting in the boat." And I turn around, and there's Carrie Fisher. You, all of a sudden, you hear, oh, na, my God. Na, 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 na. Oh, my God. She had two French people with her. I won't forget this till the day I die. And she had a tour guide. And she, I immediately ran up to her, and I took her hand. I go, hi there. May I help you? And she sat her right down. And then I started loading the gun. And I said, would you like to take your own trip around the river, or do you want any other people in the boat? Because I can, I can load this up. I can do it for all of these folks. Or do you want just your own private trip? And then she says, you can give me my own private trip. And I go, 
ma'am, I have so many action figures of you at home. You, I'll do anything you say. <laughs> and she goes, give me my own trip. And I went to, I just floored the gas. I drove right past the, I'm like, hey, where's that boat going? And I went right out. And oh, I, that's awesome. I introduced myself as Duke Jupiter, which was the character name I used to call myself. And she looks at me and she goes, Duke Jupiter. And I'm like, oh my God, she said my character name. I was goes, like melting the whole aren't time Aren't you a little inside. short for a skipper? Oh, I think she laughed at like two of my jokes. It sounded exactly like that, the way she said that. What year are we talking? Mm, good Lord, 91, yeah. 92, okay. around there. All right. Right before I made my big Simpson fortune and got out, out of the Disney park. And, uh, oh, my God. And at the end of the trip, she came up and she said, that was great. And she leaned in and she gave me a little peck on the cheek. And I was like, oh, my God. I'll never wash this oh cheek again, Mrs. Fisher. Fisher. And just the week before, I spent like 45 bucks waiting in line for Jeremy Bullock's autograph. We, nobody even, oh. He's in a helmet. I don't even know if that's really him. But the Princess Leia yeah. gave me a little, oh, my God. Oh. But that, he's talking about Boba Fett. For those right, yeah, he played Boba he Fett. He played Boba Fett, Correct. yeah. Who I love. I love him, not, We're going to get a oh. whole backstory movie of him. <laughs> Who cares? I'm tearing up just thinking about it. That was amazing. She was cool. Yeah. That's awesome. Yeah. You give Carrie Fisher a private I did. jungle cruise tour. I did. And she laughed at what? Oh, he'll get the point in the I end? I can't remember or... what joke. I think it might have been the hippo joke. I the gorilla is messing yeah. with that Jeep. And looks, he got it. He's you finally got, got it to turn over. over. Right. We had a little trouble getting started this morning. Right, right. <laughs> now, you're talking about... The pre-Indiana Jones cruise with the red and white striped right, right, awning right, right, right. and the, the classic. Right. That's I worked on great. it during that time period, yeah. That's fantastic. It was slick. Do you know the little man who lives at Disneyland? The I little the little door by the, tr by the tree house. Yes. Yeah, right, right, where right. Where is that? They just, it just got back in the park after being gone for a long time. I didn't know it was gone. But where is it oh, at? Yeah. Uh, if you look at the, at the entrance to the Indiana Jones ride, look in the planner to the right, and then look behind, and you can see the. There's a little door on a tree where a right. guy. Where it's supposed to be a little leprechaun lives. Right. A leprechaun. He's the little man who lives at Disneyland. One of the little th lores of the park. Of he used to sell a golden book. Little things like that. Oh really? And now I did not know. Oh, this. we we have it. Yeah. Oh wow. There's a golden book, and it was supposed to introduce kids like all over the country who couldn't get to Disneyland. What it was, because he lived there, and he would tell you about it. Mm -hmm. That's fantastic. That's a good yeah. kids' book. The little man who lived, but he smokes a pipe, and he would never no, do not it anymore. Now. No, yeah, yeah, can't do that. Nobody smokes apparently. He could vape. He could vape. He could vape, and he could have a the selfie little stick. Little man of Disneyland. Wow. There he is. There he is. There he is with Donald There he is. So, so what did you name the guy with the two heads? Which guy with two heads? Trader Sam. Trader Sam. Yeah. His name's Trader Sam. So Trader Sam is offering a special. Two of his heads for one of yours. Trader Sam's the only native that actually got to go to college, but he was thrown out because he was trying to butter up one of his professors. <laughs> I, I went over to his house for a dinner party a while back. It was kind of odd. We got there a little late, and he was upset. He, I think he gave us the cold shoulder. <laughs> but uh, his wife made a great soup, and I'm really going to miss her. And uh, yeah, it's... I can just go yeah. on and on. <laughs> and what about what about when the natives are chanting, dancing? I used yeah. to, I, I remember I would slow the boat down. I go, wait a minute, hold on, I can translate this. I I took a little Swahili in junior college. Hold on a second. Hooray, we killed the lion. Hooray, we killed the lion. The man in the blue hat is next. <laughs> hip, hip, hooray. I don't know what that means. Some kind of a tribal ritual. Oh, my gosh, they're coming on the left. And I'm throwing the gas right there. <laughs> my favorite see. Jungle Cruise joke is, uh, I, they don't even use it anymore. It's, uh, we're about to approach Schweitzer Falls, mm -hmm. named for famed explorer Dr. Albert Ar Falls. A guy got off the ride, produced his driver's license. His name was actually Albert Falls, and he was a psychiatrist, so he was a doctor. That's and we're like, you're really Dr. Albert Falls. Oh, my we God. Met him. You we met him. We took a picture with him, I think, even. <coughs> One oh. time on the Jungle Cruise, we were about to approach the first front side of water, mm -hmm. and the other boat was coming the other way, and the wake derailed you. Derailed That's us. The dangerous spot of the river, right? Forty there. minutes yeah. we sat there. there. For Christmas, I really wanted to go they do the jingle cruise. cruise. Yeah, Everybody it goes from it. deep to shallow right there. That's why it's easy to. Is derail. that what it is? Yeah. How funny is that, man? Isn't that great? That's wonderful. I love. All right, we have Jungle Skipper Noel Cox oh, following it. in the footsteps of John Lasseter. Yeah. Did they throw you in the water on your first day or your last day? My, la I actually did a cannonball off the front of the Mark Twain on my last day before I went away to art school. Did you really? I did. I wore hot pink bathing shorts with yellow flowers. I have it on video cassette. I was gonna say, there's, I was gonna ask for photos. You have video. I have a video. I need it. that for the show notes. Oh dear lord! Yeah, wow. man. I'll have to dig that we'll up. Digitize that. Put it right on the net. I put posters up all over saying I was back then. Nobody really quit. It was there was no turnover like there is. There was no rules. It was there was rules, but not like there are today. Oh, yeah, no, Lawyers there's rules, rules upon rules now. I would be arrested now if I did that. 
Oh yeah, I'm and sure, I would be yeah. arrested in a second. What? But I put up posters all over trespassing oh. on private property. Correct. Yeah, I put posters up saying I was going to do. It. I illustrate. I put a little drawing of me. But I had people from Small World, the canoes, the parking lot. They all came to see somebody jump off wow. in front of Mark Twain. Well, I know from reading Mouse Tales. I'm in Mouse Tales. Who, who are that, you? I'm in the second Mouse Tales book. I have both. And he talks about that whole thing about a guy jumping off the front of the Mark Twain in the show. Oh, it's in the book. Yeah, I was going to say because most of yeah. my lore comes from David Keenan's yeah, yeah. Mouse Tales books, which are the best. Yeah, they're phenomenal. And yeah, I met him one time and I said, hey, why don't you do one about knots? And he said, yeah, nobody cares, kid. Oh, <laughs> wow. Ouch. All right. We want to thank Nolan and Amanda Cox for coming on the show. Yay. Thanks for having us. Yeah. For somebody who didn't want to talk, 80 <laughs> plus minutes, man, you're welcome really? back anytime. Oh, we can talk you. about anything. When you want to do that Simpsons one, yeah. that sounds fantastic. You may even get some free artwork out of the deal. What's your favorite Simpsons episode? The one with the Who, I think it's called Tale of Two Cities, where they divide the city in half with a wall because of the the phone numbers. The, yeah, change. that's where Homer keeps calling and he goes, doo, 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 and he's laying on the ground in the fetal position. I love that. That's the area code. Yeah. That's where they're snobbish about which, right, right, which right. code are you in? Right. Yeah, and then if you look at the wall, you can see the angel. Right, right, right. Oh, I love that episode. I drew the wall. Oh, I drew you a lot drew of the that. wall. I worked on that a lot. I worked, my favorite part is where Homer's on fire and he's running around in a circle. Moe's launching stuff in a catapult. He's like, ha, ha, you missed me. And he goes, how about some flaming garbage? And then he gets on fire. Yeah. And he runs around in a circle. I tried to copy Roger Rabbit as much as I could for that. Nice. Scene. I love the Lord of the Flies, like, rip off episode. I worked on oh, that, too. That's a great one. They taste like burning. Yeah. That was my scene. I drew that. That's where there's a cop out where the kids don't get rescued. Well, get let's say the kids got rescued. Oh, by Mo. Mo. We, were, we hated that. We were so yeah. mad about oh, it's that. it's such a cop out. That's no, this is the end of the story? Yeah. The yeah. writers we thought were just lazy at that oh, point. Oh, it's totally lazy. They just ran out of room and Mo yeah. Mo rescued him. Yeah, you know, they picked the most unlikely right, right, kid hating right, character right. except for Maggie, right? Right. I love You're, Maggie. She's when Mo was uh, talking about being uh, being a boxer, I boxed as uh, gorgeous, a uh, kid gorgeous. Wow. Then uh, kid presentable. <laughs> <laughs> and then just kid. Wow. <laughs> and then oh Homer, he picks up Homer with the fl the fan man. Right, right, right. And he goes, are you an angel? Yeah, all of us angels wear Ferris slacks. Oh. <laughs> wow. Isn't Mo the greatest? I love that character. I love Mo. My friend Josh used to do the best Mo stuff. That's Mo like it. Yeah. He works at DreamWorks now. And I love all of the I love the phone calls, you know. Oh, we didn't do any of those when I was there IP, that I can think of. IP. I, everybody put your glasses down. IP freely. Those were genius. Yeah. I want uh, Amanda. Amanda Hug and Kiss. Everybody, I'm looking for Amanda Hug and Kiss. What? Bart That's, used to crank call the bar, and he goes, hello, I'm looking for Amanda. Amanda Hug and Kiss. Uh, hold on. Hold on. <gasps> and then he'd ask, is there an Amanda, Amanda Hug and Kiss? I need Amanda Hug and Kiss. And he'd go, listen here, I don't know who you are, but if I find out who you are, I'm going to rip out your eyeballs and shove them down your pants so you can watch me kick your ass. <laughs> Oh. Uh, it's, it's the Simpsons. Um, oh. And you know, it was based on, on reality. Oh, correct. Right. The, the Reds bar. bar. It was yes. bar, yeah. Yeah, that, I have them. I've had them for years. The best one is it goes, uh, I'm looking for a friend of mine. His, his name is Cole. What? Cole. <laughs> Cole? Yeah, his last name is Cuts. K-U-T-Z. Oh. Hold on. Cole Cuts. <laughs> Nobody here by that name. <laughs> Old man keep getting fooled. Oh, it's Crazy. the greatest ever, oh. man. So anyways... We're going to wrap it up. It's a drinking game, you know. Every time I right, say we're yeah, going right. to wrap it up, people drink and they right. get drunk. It was like, it was like the third time. Oh, yeah. <laughs> but when you're, you're having fun. Who wants to wrap it up, right? we got to wrap it up, though. We are live from Disneyland. Not really. We're here in Buena Park. These are the Cox people. Yes. We have Amanda. Yep. That, and give no. us a plug. You have a YouTube channel. Oh, uh, yes. I have a YouTube channel, and I have I call myself Mutini. Mutini. And I'm about to mm. upload. I'm going to upload, make a video tomorrow, actually, of me unboxing my... It's new Star Wars figures I got today. So. so okay, so how do we find it under Mutini? M O O T I N I. Mutini. And do you have anything to plug? I am a, a schnook that works at a theme park. Come and say hello to me. So if you're at the Animation Academy, Correct. Disney's California Adventure, ask for Noel. Even if he's not working, oh, no. right, ask right. for Noel. It really pisses off the other artists who are there. It, it does. I'm and, there Monday through Friday. And when Noel's not there. Just get up and walk out. Right. Whoa. Ouch. It's not even worth it if he's not there, people. Oh. You know they used to do that at the horseshoe. Oh, the right, the wrong actor wasn't there. No, they, they, they would him? all, all the passwords would line up for Crazy Kirk and the Hillbillies, and or, or Billy Hill and the Hillbillies. Right, right, right. And if they got the B team, they would just get up during the show and walk out. Wow. So that rude. would make those people feel so oh, bad. Oh, it's the worst thing <laughs> ever. I don't see like, no, once you sit down, you're obligated to stay for the entire thing. Be yeah. polite. What is what say on the toilets? 
at um, at uh, uh, what's that place called in in San Diego we go to? The they're really rude place. I don't know. Dick's Last Resort. Dick's Last Resort. Thank yeah, you. the bathrooms at Dick's Last Resort say, "Please remain seated for the entire performance." Oh my god! Right? Is that good? Oh, that a way to end it? Place. I would never go to that restaurant. I got. Oh, you'd have a miserable time. I know. I, I learned about that on Ninety One Reasons. Yeah, because that woman grabbed me and was like, "Is this all the tip you're gonna leave?" And I was like, "Yes, it oh is." Oh my Seriously? god. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Before we They're close really off, rude, I got a plug. You have a, uh, Austin has a plug. Oh, I'm yes. excited about this. You should go check out foxtrot-reviews.tumblr.com or The Foxtrot on YouTube. It's my new review channel I am launching. I'll he's, be there. He's very good at that. What I are we great. doing on that show? We are reviewing various collectibles and oddities. In time, it will spread out to things like vlogs and podcasts, but I'm not ready to go there yet. So right now, we'll stick into collectibles. You're right. a man with a vision. Luna, anything to plug? Not at the moment. No. Rachel, anything no. to plug? I wish. I need a job. Need a job. <laughs> if anybody's Joey. hiring, needs a roommate. graphic design roommate, anything like that. <laughs> Josie, anything to plug? No. Oh, I have nothing to plug. <laughs> what about Josie's panda on Instagram? Yeah. What or about Josie's it. panda dolls? Or no, something? if you want to follow my Instagram where I take pictures of dolls, it's Josie's underscore dolls underscore pics. That's all. Josie's underscore dolls underscore picks. I didn't know about this. Is this something new? Yep, she just started. Oh, it's something, something, something brand new. She just started it like five minutes ago. All right. Well, thanks everybody for tuning in. Uh, my brand new book, The Ice Temple, is available on Amazon.com. Two and a half years in the making, and you can hold it in your hand for twenty bucks. Uh, contact me on Facebook if you want a signed copy. I'm out right now, but I usually have copies in, but not at this exact moment. But I don't know when you're listening to this. Uh, also. Uh, we'll be at Comic Excitement the second weekend in January. There's an issue with that, by the way. So I don't know about We'll that. be at Comic Excitement the second <laughs> weekend in January because they've very happily given us comp passes. We'll be talking about it. Uh, I'm not sure what the woman in the back was saying. She doesn't. She's not even on the show. I'm not even sure who that was. <laughs> we'll be there on Sunday. Who is See, that? I'm not even sure who that was. Saturday, no, no. It's just like a voice. I'm not even sure what's going on. What's happening? <laughs> Ice Temple. Ice Temple, Ice Temple, Ice Temple. Uh, we also do a podcast called 91 Reasons. If you'd like to tune in, you can find it on iTunes. Uh, we'll also be doing a podcast uh, about how we got the title of 91 Reasons. It's called 90 Rogue One Reasons. And uh, that'll be great. Yeah. So it's a no. pre we're doing a prequel podcast. No. Where I will be played by a digital version of Jeff. Stop. That sound great? <laughs> Thanks for tuning in. I'm sorry I have bored you the last minute of the show. The last minute of the show is like a hodgepodge. You know, it's like it, this is okay, you know this this is like a very awkward one night stand. No. Whoa, really? You and I have slept uh, together in and now of speaking. What? I'm I'm trying what? to get out. You want oh, wait, so you got back I got you back to my place. I'm yeah, in that role. And I can't <laughs> okay. You I can't think I, I didn't can't, go over to you. You I, didn't charm you actually I am oh in your God. place. You charmed me over I, here. Oh, yeah, and I like I, I wanted I want it to be over and I know that there's an Uber on the way I but like I want to have Captain Crunch with I, you. I, like, oh my I do god. I have Captain Crunch and watch The Empire Strikes Back with you in the morning. It just At won't, least make a peanut butter. Cream. I don't have that movie. I only have it on VHS. <laughs> we're going to have to unspool it. We're going to have to unspool it with a flashlight. Oh wow. <laughs> And I will act it out with my costumes and toys. Oh, He's worth a lot more to me alive. He's no good to me dead. Oh, Jeremy Bullock. No, is <laughs> The guy really? you paid... <laughs> what? You paid $45 for a Jeremy Bullock autograph? Is he... In... I, I did. I still have it. Oh, my God. Wait, wait. I don't know why I called back to that. I just realized... Forty five for you know for forty five bucks he would probably come to your house now in costume and I'd walk buy the around. Ticket to get in, I had to buy the photo and then I had to buy the autograph. That Jeremy Bullock was forty five bucks. Oh my god! Well, you know, oh my god! I waited, but like, you know over what? An hour. But you know what? They've had people oh. like sign autographs for even like now. I we're gonna see autographs and the guy's gonna be like, "Well, who are you? I was I was the guy underneath the CGI Tarkin." Oh no! I, oh. Was, I had the mocap suit yeah, on. Yeah, his autograph is eighty dollars. Oh, you know he'll do that because he also voiced Tarkin and Webbles. Oh. Yeah. And Clone Wars. Well, since he's not really the real Tarkin, can I pay him in Monopoly money? Yes. <laughs> yeah. So <laughs> hey, you know what? We're gonna wrap it up and we're just gonna say this: uh, we lost Carrie Fisher today. Uh, to a lot of us, she was 
the first time we thought about a girl in a way other than Icky. Uh, in Return of the Jedi, she taught us all how to be a man. Uh, she mm -hmm. taught little girls that you could be hot, sexy, and still be a badass. Yes. Mm -hmm. um, she also taught guys like me that... Anybody can write if you put your mind to it. Yeah. Uh, she was a, I don't think even people even know, she was an, an incredible script doctor who fixed a lot of movies. You'd go to the movies and go, wow, that was really good. Well, you know what? It wasn't good before Carrie fixed the script. Uh, Postcards from the Edge, um, uh, uh, From Here to Maternity, uh, The Princess Diary, she, uh, an incredible body of work. Uh, and forget about it. She's Princess Leia, for God's sake. Watch the holiday special and watch her high on cocaine singing the Life Day song. She was on cocaine. Oh, everybody was on yeah, cocaine in that show. Uh, I was on it. I was only like six. Right. Um, it was mandatory at that time. Yeah, they, they issued it at the, the, right. the, the drugstore. Um, but uh, we lost her today, and that really sucks. And I'm probably going to do a whole show where I talk about her. But while it's raw and it's out there... Uh, 2016 sucks. It's taken a lot of it heroes. Not over yet. That's what scares me. What Gene Wilder. Not over yet. Oh, Gene Wilder. Um, Prince. Bowie David Prince. Bowie. Alan friggin' Rickman. Muhammad Ali. Uh, Muhammad Ali. And Carrie Fisher. George Michael. I mean, this is... That's a laundry list of greatness Our that's icons, gone forever. Yeah, yeah. So... Um, you know what? Jeremy Bullock could be next. So your $45 might Whoa. be priceless. Whoa. It, it already could. is in my It already mind. is, right? Yeah, it's worth it. And yeah. I would have just, I would have looked Jeremy in the eye and said, I loved you as Boba Fett, but I never got a rocket firing one. So now no, I have I to didn't. smack you in the face. No, it wasn't his fault. It might have been. It wasn't his fault. All right. Well, thanks for tuning in. Uh, let's go around the room. Uh, I am Noel. I'm Amanda. I'm Austin. I'm Luna. Rachel. Josie. Josie.underscoredolls.pix.org. Josie, come say bye! No, it's, no. Oh, she's, she's coming, she's coming, she's in. coming. What the heck? What are you in the episode? Well, you, and Josie Tucker as Josie. <laughs> come say bye. Say, I'm Josie. I'm Josie. No, that was Peace. well worth it. Oh. And, she, and then she dabbed. The running. Oh, she's into this dabbing. Thing. All right, well, she's thanks for tuning in. She's in the room as we speak. For God's I feel like the Monty Python record. For God's sakes, pick it up. Pick up the arm. <laughs> <laughs> I'm Jeff Tucker. Thanks for tuning in. This show is called 91, 91 Reasons. Thanks for listening. By Grand Thar's Hammer. We'll be back with another episode. Live long and prosper. May the force be with you. So say we all. Hey, hey, hey. No, I want your undivided attention. Look, PB, this is important. Does someone want to ask you? Mm-hmm. I... Mm hmm <laughs> I want to know if you'll do something. What? I want to know if you'll go someplace with me. Like where? The drive-in. Look, Daddy, I like you. Like? I like you! And that's the thing, I like you too. Daddy! There's a lot of things about me you don't know anything about, Daddy. Things you wouldn't understand. Things you couldn't understand. Things you shouldn't understand. I don't understand. You don't want to get mixed up with a guy like me. I'm a loner, Daddy. A rebel. So long.